win their second FCS championship. And they do it in fine fashion, 39 to 13, and let the party begin. Welcome to Flagstaff on the walk-up Sky Dome as the Lumberjacks of Northern Arizona and their record-breaking running back, Zach Bowman, take on South Dakota State and their star quarterback, Austin Sumner, as the FCS first round continues next. The NCAA FCS Football Championships is presented by Northwestern Mutual. Tonight, from the walk-up Sky Dome, it's the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State with an 8-4 record, taking on the Lumberjacks of Northern Arizona, 9-2 on the season, and second in the Big Sky Conference. The winner of tonight's matchup in the first round will move on in the second round to take on the three seed, the Eagles of Eastern Washington. And welcome inside, everybody. Peter Young, along with former NFL quarterback Kevin O'Connell. And Kevin, for the Jackrabbits, this is a return trip to the playoffs. But for the Lumberjacks, this is the first time they've been here in 10 years. Their longtime head coach, however, Jerome Sowers, will not be here tonight. He had complications due to back surgery. We just found out not too long ago. So defensive coordinator Andy Thompson will take over the head coaching duties for tonight's game. How much of a disruption could this be for the Lumberjacks? Anytime you've had a coach in place for 16 seasons, it's not exactly going to be ideal to not have him on the sidelines. But I think Coach Sowers would be the first person to tell you that his staff can handle the duties tonight. Both of these teams have a great running game led by a star running back with the first name of Zach, go figure. Zach Zenner for the Jackrabbits and Zach Bowman for the Lumberjacks. But for South Dakota State, they have a very good junior quarterback, Austin Sumner. They do, and there's no question that Zach Zenner is the focal point of this offense. But Austin Sumner, junior quarterback, is the prototype quarterback. Size, power, arm strength. He is going to set many of the Jackrabbit quarterback passing records before it's all said and done in complete control of this offense. Offense. Well, for Northern Arizona and the Lumberjacks, the story begins and ends with senior running back Zach Bowman. Zach Bowman does everything for this team, leads them in rushing yards and receptions, four straight 1,000-yard rushing seasons. He's got great vision, he's good in open field, and he's extremely explosive. He really is the whole package. It is hard to say how much open field he will have tonight because of this man with the Golden Locks, R.C. Kilgore, leads the Jackrabbits in tackles, averaging nearly 10 a game. We will have the kickoff coming up next. Visiting here to Northern Arizona in Flagstaff, and Kevin, let's get to our Northwestern Mutual planning for success keys to the game. Well, offense and the balance is the key for the Jackrabbits. Defense, they need to win the turnover battle. They are fifth in the nation with a plus 14 margin on turnovers. There you're looking at their head coach, John Stigelmeyer, in his 17th season, 110 and 80. That is his all-time record. He has been at the school for a long time. And there you go. This is the uh, first game as head coach for Andy Thompson. Offensively, they have to have a plan B after Zach Bowman their leading rusher. They want to get their starting quarterback, Kyron Poe, some looks downfield defensively. They too would like to win the turnover battle. They lead the nation in defensive touchdowns with eight. And again, the story really at the top of the show here is uh, Danny Thompson is your interim head coach. Jerome Sowers not coaching tonight. Kevin still having some issues with uh, his microphone, so we'll hopefully get that fixed up here momentarily. South Dakota State won the coin toss and they elected to receive. So the Lumberjacks of Northern Arizona in the Avian Gold will kick things off to start. Back to receive is Trevor Wesley, sophomore from Oro Valley, Arizona. There are actually eight players on the Jack Rabbit roster who hail from the state of Arizona. Meanwhile, the Lumberjacks are dominated by players from Arizona and California. And we are underway here in Flagstaff, and this has been the norm this year, the kickoffs 
going into the end zone for a touchback because, believe it or not, we are at nearly 7,000 feet elevation, so the ball flies. When you combine the elevation and also playing indoors, we're going to see a lot of touchbacks tonight. Look forward to seeing some longer field goals than normal as well. Good atmosphere inside the dome here tonight. Welcome back. It's good to, it's good to be with you. <laughs> hey, Austin Sumner out of Brandon, North Dakota. And look at his size as well, 6'5", 225. You know, this whole offense for the Jackrabbits, they have got some beef with their star wide receiver, Jason Schneider, number 83. Keep your eye on him. He's a matchup nightmare at 6'5", 220. First play from scrimmage, and they give it to their star running back, Zach Center, Jr. out of Egan, Minnesota. Immediately, we see Zenner getting downhill in the running game. Get used to that tonight, Peter. We're going to see number 34 running very, very hard. 31 running very hard for this Jackrabbit offense. And you see the impact players for tonight. Zenner with his fantastic stats this year, second in the FCS and nearly 1,700 yards. And Austin Haskett, the linebacker for the Lumberjacks, he leads the team in tackles. He will have his hands full as well. Second and six going to stay on the ground and a first down and then some a huge hole nearly to midfield center with a big gain on second down and so two carries right in a row and you kind of get the idea Kevin that we may see a lot of this running right behind left tackle Brian Witzman one of the best left tackles in the country that's what they want to do establish the line of scrimmage early look at that hole for Zach Zenner if they're able to block like that up front he's going to have a big time night tonight Tackle by number 19, Anders Battle. The cornerback is a senior from Phoenix. First team all big sky for the Lumberjacks. First and 10. Now to the right side. Nothing there. May lose a yard or two. And there is number 35 kind of jumping in on the pile. That's Haskell. Yeah, one of our in-plaque players tonight, Austin Haskett, is all over the field. He can go sideline to sideline. Extremely smart player, can diagnose things before the snap based on formation and the offensive tendencies. He's a fun guy to study on tape. Well, it's interesting as well, Kevin, you look at the stats before this game, and it's so similar between both of these teams in terms of how many times they run it, what kind of yards they give up. But uh, both of these teams are going to make use of their running backs tonight. Blake Lockett, too. Zenner again. Not much that will bring up a third and long. And with that 7,000 feet elevation, you got the Jackrabbits coming in from, from the lowland territory. they got to make sure they don't burn out Zenner here in the first quarter. Yeah, you're going to see them slow the tempo down. And if he's going to get three, four, five carries in a row like that, they need to have success on first and second down. Because now you see third and nine. Jackrabbits want to stay out of third and long tonight. Sumner with time, the pocket collapses, and he will run. Not enough for the first down. Had to get to about the 43-yard line and is taken down, so it will be a punting situation for the Jackrabbits. Sumner with his size, you know, he's got some mobility. They will design a few plays for him, Kevin, to try and get him out in space as well as Sawyer comes on to punt. And back to receive is Lucky Dozier. Defensive back, the senior, leads the team with three interceptions out of Sacramento, California. Great punt, and a fair catch is made just outside the tip. And so the Lumberjacks will have it with uh, just under 90 yards to go to try and get on board here first. Interested to see how the Lumberjacks start out this football game offensively. Do they try to push the ball downfield? Kyron Poe has had some turnover issues, and we know this Jackrabbit defense can force a ton of turnovers, 28 of them so far this season. Yeah, again, fifth in the nation in uh, turnover margin to plus 14. Poe has made seven starts this year. He's kind of split duty with the junior Chase Cartwright. He's had four starts. We will probably see both tonight. On first down, they give it to Bowman. 
and he gets a few up to about the 15. You see the cutback early on. He does a phenomenal job of not always seeing the primary hole. If there's something that opens up on the perimeter, he will bounce that thing outside, and you'll see that cutback. A little bit of pe penetration by the Jackrabbits, but a positive play there on first down. Bowman averages five and a half yards a carry, has not gotten into the end zone as much as Zenner, only eight touchdowns on the season. Poe to throw on second down, first throw of the game for the Lumberjacks, and it's a completion and a first down. So that is a good start to the sophomore. Love the play call. I think that Kyron Poe needs more easy completions, and this is just very quick. One step drop and let that thing out. Accurate football out to your wide receiver, Alex Holmes. Move the chains, but those easy throws early on, Peter, will give him confidence as this game goes on. 39th catch of the season for Holmes, just behind Bowman who leads the team in receptions as well as rushing. Play action. Here comes the rush, and Poe goes down. Great job by the Jack Rabbit defense, and number 33, that is T.J. Lally, the sophomore out of Chicago. NAU trying to take a shot down the field. We know that they want to do that. They have not had enough big plays in the passing game. They want to establish their running back, Zach Bauman. And when he opens up things for the passing game, hopefully Kyron Poe can get the ball down the field, but you have to protect him. You see some penetration. Linebacker T.J. Lally getting in there for the sack. Second and 17 now for the Lumberjacks. Quick throw out to the 15. And a short game, ball is loose after the play is whistled dead. That's Nicole number six, senior wide. California. If you're going to take that shot on first down, trying to get the ball down the field, this is a great play on second down to get some back, get back ahead of the chains and not give yourself that much more of a third down and long situation. But that's exactly where they are, third and 15. Important for Kyron Poe early on in this game to be smart with the football. A lot of short yardage passing for the Lumberjacks, but a problem all year long. And they're getting six on most passes. Right now they need 14. Little screen is set up. Pass is tipped. And that one is nearly intercepted as it's a little Harlem Globetrotter routine between Bowman and some of the Jack Rabbit defenders. But after all is said and done, it's an incompletion and a punting situation for Northern Arizona. Third down and long situation. Classic screen offensive coordinator play call right there. The only problem is when Zach Bowman is your entire offense, the entire defense is watching him. So to try to sneak him out, get some linemen in front, that's going to be a hard conversion for the Lumberjacks. Andy Wilder on to punt for the Lumberjacks. is very good. Third in the nation and net punting. He also double duties as the kicker, and this one bounces at about the 40 out of bounds. And so neither team can get anything done offensively on their first possession. 9.24 to go in the first quarter from Flagstaff. First quarter from Flagstaff. And so for Coach John Stiglmeyer and the Jackrabbits, 8-4 on the season, 5-3 in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. They won their last four straight. Some nail biters to get into the playoffs. And now this is their second possession on offense, and it is Zenner with the carry. So it has been a heavy dose of Zach Zenner. So, Kevin, obviously they're looking at the film. They're thinking they can exploit this. One of our keys to the game is balance, and they're going to need Austin Sumner to make plays in the passing game against what is a very good NAU secondary. A lot of playmaking ball hawks on the back end. Lucky Dozier, probably the leader of the back end group. But they're going to need their quarterback to make throws. It cannot be all Zach Zenner here tonight. Center with the carry on second and seven. And taken down by Mark Thompson, the lineman, the senior from the Stockton, California area. What happens when you have only running plays working for you? You can have corner blitzes like Anders Battle just did off the edge, and there's no man accounted to block that player. So when they start sending safeties and corners, you know that the Lumberjacks are not respecting the pass game enough. 13th tackle of the season for Thompson, third and five. Zenner again needs to get five yards to right at about midfield. Depends on where they spot this for forward progress. In on the tackle is Ryan Reardon, the senior linebacker from Scottsdale. 
think he's going to come up about a half a yard short possibly here. They are going to give him the first down. So three straight running plays and Peter you just got to wonder is that shot play coming. Are they setting up that downfield throw possibly to Jason Schneider the number one receiver in the Missouri Valley Conference. We'll see it here a lot of just downhill power football trying to get double teams inside on those defensive tackles and let their big workhorse running back get downhill. First and 10 from midfield. Plenty of time for Sumner all day to throw but nobody open and he goes down back at the 40 yard line and that is Mike Dozen the safety the senior from Pittsburgh California and he's a good one. Very good player all over the field for this lumberjack defense but the shot play was called. They try to get the ball down the field. They had Jason Schneider on a crossing route. When it's not there, you got to throw this football away because now you're second and almost 20. And I don't have a play call for that one. <laughs> At this point, you're just trying to get back to maybe a third and 10 if you possibly can. But sacks like that, for a junior quarterback, you have to know better than that early on in this football game. Throw the ball away and live to fight another down. Second sack on the season for Dozer. Gandy in at running back. Zenner is out. The short pass number 84. That is Trevor Tiefenthaler. 5'10", 185, senior out of Sioux Rapids, Iowa. Just like we saw NAU try a screen on third and long. This is second and long trying to get back on track with the wide receiver screen. But these defenses on both sides are prepared and they're fast. They both can run the secondary for the Lumberjacks. All four of these guys can cover and turn the football over. They do lead the nation in defensive touchdowns. And you saw there the Jackrabbits, their third down conversion percentage has gotten much better as the season has gone on. Pass is complete and a huge hit by the Lumberjacks secondary. And are they going to rule this incomplete? It is an incompletion. And how about the hit by battle? Trying to run four verticals down the field on third and long. And the Lumberjacks were just sitting back waiting for that. Nice job by Blair Wisham not going high. We've seen a lot of targeting calls this year. And the receiver is still down on the field, but that is the result of a lot of these penalty flags being thrown. Safeties are going to go low, able to get the pass break up there, get the football back for his offense. That is Tiefen Taller, the wide receiver, more of a possession receiver at the 5'10, 185 pound size. In contrast to Schneider, the bigger target for Sumner. So we will take a break right now. 6 1 left in the first quarter. And um, as we can see, Tiefen Taller is going to get up. So on fourth and 19, we'll stay here. Now you've got a decision for Coach Stiglmeyer. Well, you're on the road, fourth and 19, I guess. You're probably not going to go for it. I thought they were a little bit closer to midfield, but uh, I think they're going to part. I would love to play for you <laughs> as my head coach. Fourth and 19, and we're going for it. I love the aggressive style already from you. I looked at where he was down on the ground, and I thought, wow, I had to look all the way back for the ball. That's a long way. But it's good to see that he is up and doing well. Of course, this is... Thanksgiving weekend. We all have plenty to be thankful for. Both of these teams thankful to be here in this first round of the FCS playoffs. Although in the walk-up Sky Dome, Kevin seats so over 12,000. A lot of students are home for the break. So I wish I could tell you this place is packed, but it's not. I know the Lumberjacks would have had would have liked to have their first playoff game in 10 years. Yeah. Be well, all the students were on campus, but pretty good crowd here nonetheless. Sawyer on to punt. And that is uh, two good punts in a row for Sawyer. And again, the fair catch is made inside the 15. And so Dozier cannot return it. Still no score. Defense is dominating here. 5.53 to go in the first. A win against a big sky team. They just seem to do that year after year. The Lumberjacks on first down, keep it on the ground. Not much going, and Kevin, they've only got one first down, and so uh, it's been mostly defense here today. Some of the key players in our other games offensively, Harris with the touchdown, 173 yards. Ross for Coastal Carolina with the four touchdowns. 
and Holman for Furman. Got in the end zone twice on a punt return and a pick six. And speaking of pick sixes, boy, this Lumberjack defense, we may see one of those today because they've done it six times this year. Whenever that ball gets turned over, every guy in this defense expects to go score. Bowman with some daylight finally on second down and will get gang tackled at about the 20. And so he will have a third and about four coming up for the Lumberjacks. Impact players for today's Marshall Pugh, the defensive end. He's had a fantastic season. And Nick Cole, the wide receiver, already caught a pass today. If they're going to have big plays in the passing game, they need Nick Cole to be the guy to get downfield yards after catch. Nick Cole is the Lumberjacks guy for that. Well, it's been a good start for Poe. Two for three so far on the evening. They're going to run it. Spin move. And Bowman nowhere to go. Great defense by the Jackrabbits again in the backfield. And that is Lally. He has had a very good start to this game. Third and three. The entire defense with their eyes on the running back. They load up that box and... When you allow free runners and penetration into the backfield, I don't care who you are at running back, it's going to be hard to gain any kind of positive yardage. Well, so far, with about four minutes left in the first quarter, the impact players have been the punters for both teams as Wilder is on to punt for the second time. This one received at about the 30. Nifty little move for the Jackrabbits and the return. By number 22, that is Jerron Butler, the sophomore from Tempe, Arizona. Another one of those Arizona players who left the state to play for the Jackrabbits. Okay. And we do have a flag down or not? Somebody must have pulled it up. Nope, still there. We got it. Kevin Hassel, our referee today. Penalty for the end of the kick. First down, South Dakota State. Coach Stiglmeyer wants to argue that one. This is a very disciplined team. Uh, top 10 in the FCS in terms of penalties per game, only about 4.4. They had a ton of penalties in their opening game, but since then, they have really kind of picked it up. And, and you have to point to this man, Coach Stiglmeyer, because you know, they're winning the fourth quarter, they're winning the turnover margin, efficient in the red zone. The improvement throughout the season for this football team has been tremendous. And a lot of the penalties, aggressive penalties. Either P.I., we saw a holding right there, guy just trying to make the right block. Gets a little grabby with the jersey, but not a lot of pre-snap penalties that drive coaches crazy. Zenner with another carry. He has had plenty more running room, it seems, than Bowman. And that gain out just beyond the 30. He needed to get to about the 34 for the first down. One of his best attributes as we take a look from behind, yards after contact. Only a yard or two down the field when he's met by the first defender either carries that guy or the next guy five or six yards. So impressive to watch Zach Zenner on tape, and he's already getting off to a good start here today. Yeah, averaging nearly five a carry so far. Second and two. They call his number again. How about the patience? Another first down as he waits for things to open up. Gets out past the 40. That will move the chains. And tackle by the Lumberjacks, but not after another first down. You mentioned patience. He's got his fullback, Benedetto, out in front. And then when he gets in the open field, that vision, it's impressive. He's a big guy, very difficult to tackle, but he's got the agility to make that lateral cut that separates running backs at this level. Tips the scales at 220. So now you got a first and 10 again. Closing in on midfield. Now to the right side, and it just doesn't seem like it's been as effective as they have been going off of that left side of the offensive line. Well, there's no question the experience is on the left side, and maybe more talent as well. When you look at Brian Witzman and Alex Parker, the two seniors on the left side, played a lot of football together, that camaraderie, long time, a lot of snaps together. That goes a long way in a playoff game where maybe the nerves are a little higher than normal. 
So there you see the numbers for Zenner tonight. Nine rushes for 42 yards as he comes out. And checking in is Reggie Gandy, number 30. We mentioned Whitsman. This is his 48th straight start, number 76 for the Jackrabbits. And Gandy gets the call, and he gets a nice game on second down and eight. And this will bring up another third and short. Gandy, a good change of pace guy, and you need to keep Zenner fresh. If you're going to give him 10 carries a quarter, which he's very much on pace for right now, you got to have a guy that can come in, maybe be a little bit more deceptive, his speed a little quicker in and out of his cuts. But Gandy can be a big time playmaker. Had a 22 yard touchdown a week ago against Youngtown State. He started every game in his four year career in Richmond, so that is a school record. And as a quarterback, you love that, right? You love to have the, the veteran. Garden your blind side. Third and two. They stack the box. And I don't know if they're going to get it. Needed to get to the 48. And the officials are standing at about the 50. Looks like he's going to be about two yards short. And you're going to see a lot of navy blue jerseys around this football. They are flying to the line of scrimmage right now. No threat whatsoever for the secondary in the pass game. And here on fourth and two, big people come on the field for South Dakota State. Are they going to try to go power football, maybe play action? You mentioned Sumner can run. How about a bootleg? Well, here now they're going for it on fourth down, fourth and two. And Sumner just trying to bark out the signals, trying to get somebody for the Lumberjacks to jump as the first quarter winding down. And uh, good discipline by Northern Arizona as they stay in their stance. So, so we will take a break. Fourth and two, they'll be punting when we come back. Number seven for the FCS second round action as the three seed Eastern Washington hosts either South Dakota State or Northern Arizona live on ESPN3 and the Watch ESPN app. And so, yes, indeed, the Jackrabbits on fourth and two will punt. And so far, Kevin, it has been two times that they have pinned the Lumberjacks inside the 15. This one bounces at about the one, but it rolls into the end zone. So they can't do it for three times in the first quarter. Thought they may come out of the timeout and maybe go for it. Looks like we have a penalty flag down on the field. I like the decision, though, early on. NAU offensively has not been able to get anything going, punt that thing deep and try to stop them and keep the field position on your side. During the kick, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 50 of the receiving team. The penalty will be 10 yards or half the distance to the goal. First down, Northern Arizona. Well, I guess they're going to be inside the 15 again, and this is going to drive uh, coaches crazy. So both teams with one penalty. Neither team has scored in terms of first downs. Uh, the Jackrabbits with four and the Lumberjacks with only two. So now the, I guess the question is, you know, at what point does Thompson, and does he even make the decision, his first game as head coach, to Pulpo and put in Cartwright? First and ten on the ten. And they go to their bread and butter. And it is Bowman who gets dragged maybe for a one-yard loss. It is Cole Langer who gets him from behind. Interesting story, this freshman from South Dakota. His father, Tracy, was a baseball player at South Dakota State. And his grandfather, Jim, a Hall of Famer, played for the Miami Dolphins back when they had that perfect team. And uh, was blocking for Zonka, Greasy, and the rest of them. But here in the walk-up Sky Dome, defensive affair, 0-0, zero to zero. second quarter in Illinois. And then Townsend. And Fordham in that first quarter, Kevin, nine plays for 15 yards for the Lumberjack offense. Now Bowman is going to get that and more out to the 30, the 40, almost to midfield, finally taken down by R.C. Kilgore, the leading tackler for the Jackrabbits. But on that one play alone, he about doubled their whole first quarter production. They come out in a three wide receiver set and show pass, run the draw off the left side, and that move right there, beating that one defender in the open field, that's what he has been able to do for four seasons here at NAU. Explosive moves in the open field, 1,000 yards, four straight seasons. Those are the types of plays you got to get him in space. First and 10 from the 48. 
Play action. Pressure and Poe goes down. What a great play by the Jack Rabbit defense. Again, number 34. He is having a very good start to this one. That is Doug Pete, the senior from Kansas. Drew Emanuel, the tight end, is going to come around and just not get on that upfield shoulder. Poe's got to step up a little sooner. If that blocking is designed to be behind the center, behind that guard, he might have gotten a little wide. It looked like the tight end expected to be able to allow to let Pete get up the field on a speed rush. But after a big play on first and 10, you come back and immediately you're back behind the sticks again. Second and 22, fourth sack of the season for Pete. Bowman again, and another big game, and that looks like the second time in a row, Kevin. He kind of stumbled, lost his footing. Yeah, and he's when you're making those cuts in the open field, those power cuts, get, avoiding defenders, sometimes the footing is going to be an issue, but second time in a row now, we've seen them go to the shotgun runs. They started out this football game, a lot of fullback, 21 personnel, power football. Looks like they're trying to spread out this Jackrabbit defense now, and they've had some success here on their third drive. Bowman now 55 yards on seven attempts, 7.9 average. Now you're looking at another long third down, third and 13. Poe going for it all down to 20, and great defense by the Jackrabbits. Jimmy Forsythe, the sophomore from Omaha, Nebraska, the intended receiver, Jesse Brantley, the senior. Fourth set, running step for step with Brantley. Third down, just going to try to throw the go route down the sideline, see if you can either get the completion or the penalty. Very, very good coverage by the sophomore right there. Getting their ball back, getting the ball back for their offense again. Stopping NAU. So Wilder to punt again from about his own 35. And just another booming punt in the thin air here in Flagstaff, Arizona. Now we're going to have a return out to the 25-yard line. So a nice return by Butler. 12.55 to go in the first half. Jack Rabbit football trying to put some points. Still no score here in Flagstaff, Arizona. Andy Thompson filling in for head coach Jerome Sowers for Northern Arizona, 9-2 on the season, 7-1 in Big Sky. Their only loss was in Bozeman, Montana, against Montana State. That's probably the best win of the season for the Bobcats, but the Lumberjacks have won six straight since then. And on first down, Sumner with the throw looked like a bit of miscommunication because didn't really see the receiver turn around much for that one. He actually had a receiver open for a split second, but seemed to be a little late with the football. And when you're late and you've got a guy like Lucky Dozier, you'll see him, number 20, backpedaling. Look at the recovery speed. He's out of our screen because he's over there to make a play. That is tremendous speed and athleticism on the back end by the senior from Sacramento. Second down and 10. Center with the carry, and this will bring up a third and long situation for the Jackrabbits. Both star running backs have done well here in the first half. Bowman with 55 yards, and Zenner with 53, both averaging over five yards a touch. Both have done well. Both have gotten in the open field at times, but I'm just looking down at these defenses. You see a lot of defenders around the line of scrimmage. Single coverage on the outside. I really feel like the first team that can complete a downfield shot and get a big chunk play in the passing game We'll get a lot of momentum in this football game. Sumner only one for three up to this point. It's third and nine. Here comes pressure. He steps and throws. Nearly intercepted. And that would have been a huge turning point in this one. Right in and out of the arms of Dozer. Very tight coverage, and you'll just see it. Tremendous job. Basically running the route for receiver Jason Schneider. Between Dozen and Dozier in battle, the secondary for the Lumberjacks. I can tell you what, I would not want to have to throw against these guys. They are all over the field, single coverage, man to man, and it's allowing those linebackers and defensive ends to get a lot of pressure on Austin Sumner. 13 picks on the season for the Lumberjack defense. They come at the punter. Don't get it. Another great punt. Boy, the punters have just uh, had a field day with this thin air here at the Sky Dome. Another fair catch is made. And so the Lumberjacks will have the ball. We've got exactly 12 minutes to go in our first half. Still no score. First round of the FCS continues. 
a team that South Dakota State beat way back in September in a thrill of 34 to 26. First and 10 for the Lumberjacks. Play action. Cole with time and a wide open receiver and he underthrew him. Walker was wide open and did he make that catch? I think he did. Almost looked like he showed up there for a minute, didn't it? Adam for a touchdown. They bring three tight ends into the game and play action fake. Wide open down the field, underthrown, but it looked to me like he got the hands underneath. See if the uh, re replay officials try to take another look at that one. Big chunk play, though. That's what we said. A team needed to establish a passing game, get the ball down the field. So first and ten, they're into Jack Rabbit territory. The instant replay official for tonight's game is Judson Howard. But apparently, he thought it was a catch. And you take a look at that angle. It's pretty good. That is a tremendous job by Deshaun Walker getting those hands. He's running full speed the other way, folks, and able to shut, shut it down, put the brakes on, and get those arms and hands underneath that football at full speed. Very, very difficult to do. Tremendous play and a much needed play by the junior from Chandler, Arizona. Well, two big plays now for the Lumberjack offense here to start the second quarter. The long run by Bowman and now that long reception. They're going to run Poe out again. He throws on the run. Catch is made at about the 16-yard line. And that is Rickard. R.J. Rickard, all big Scott. Coming right at you. Amazing to see. What a little confidence. One completion down the field. Gets Kyron Poe settled down. And look at him. The body language has improved. Leading his team down the field. And I would recommend looking for Rickert more often. The first team all big sky tight end can really be a factor in this game. Big body down the field against this SDSU secondary. 6'3", 240 out of Gilbert, Arizona. So now first and 10. Finally, we got a team inside the red zone. They give it to Bowman with the shake. Inside the 10, down to the six yard line. Well, it has been tough for Bowman to get into the end zone this year, but he's close on that one. Special ability. That cut, not many guys can make that cut. Didn't even look like he was looking to the left. How does he see that hole? Special, special athlete right here. And you're right. The red zone has been an issue at times for NAU. And tonight, you never know when this SDSU offense is going to get rolling. They need touchdowns, not field goals here in the red zone. Yeah, they've only been getting... About every other time into the red zone this year have they been coming away with a touchdown 49 percent they've got to do better than that it's first and goal high snap here is Bowman does he get in yes touchdown Lumberjacks got a guy like Zach Bowman, a workhorse running back. If you're able to get some plays in the passing game, take some pressure off him, you get down in the red zone and are able to get him one-on-one -on -one with the defender, Zach Bowman's going to win that matchup 99.9% .9 of the time. Special player. Love the play call and the adjustment. Going to more of a spread in their running game. Trying to spread out this defense. Seem to find some lanes there for Zach Bowman. Good drive. Extra point is good. 7-0. Good job handling the high snap, and they get him out on the perimeter, and they're trying to find all kinds of different ways to get him on the perimeter. And when he, the tremendous knack for the end zone, he's had it his whole career here in Flagstaff. Special player. Yeah, ninth rushing touchdown of the season for Bowman. And for all these guys, you can't forget as well, but everything that Bowman has done, this is their first trip to the playoffs. You know, the Jackrabbits have been there before, but for a guy like Bowman who's done so much, that's his first playoff touchdown. And it's important for the leadership on this NAU team to get off to a good start here tonight. Because like you said, these guys have never been in this situation. Home FCS playoff game, their first time in 10 years being in the playoffs. So I imagine the emotions and the nerves were maybe a bit high to start. They don't have their head coach on the sidelines tonight. So a drive like that could be just what they needed to get going here and really relax and play their style of football game. Only well, took two minutes and four seconds, five plays, 73 yards, capped off by that six-yard TD run, just in case you did join us. Andy Thompson, the defensive coordinator, is acting as head coach tonight because Jerome Sowers 
He's been the head coach here at Northern Arizona for 16 years, all-time winningest coach ever at NAU. But uh, we were told he's not on the sidelines, so we assume he's in the hospital. He had complications due to back surgery. Had the surgery on Monday. Was kind of in and out of practice all week. And uh, I guess it's really undetermined at this point if they win, whether or not he will be on the sidelines for next week. So it's another uh, kick through the end zone here, which happens quite a bit for the Lumberjacks taking advantage of that thin air. The last drive, four plays special that we saw here. The great catch by Deshaun Walker, and then they find the tight end, Ricker, down the field. Get down inside the red zone. There's one guy that's going to get it a lot of the time, and he was able to make two runs and find his way into the end zone, gets in the open field, and a huge answer for what looked like a struggling, scuffling offense early on. Interested to see what South Dakota State comes back with. Did they try to open things up in the passing game? I apologize. That was actually Bald and Angry. Patrick Bald and Angry, the tight end who made that catch on that last drive, not Rick. So it's first and ten. Under 10 to go in the first half, and a wide open receiver. And that, I believe, is the first touch of the afternoon for Jason Schneider, Jr., who's caught a touchdown pass in six straight games for the Jackrabbits. Had to be a coverage breakdown because we know that the Lumberjacks want to know where Jason Schneider is at all times. Wide open along the sidelines. Looked like a little miscommunication on who was the flat defender there. Good start to the drive for the Jackrabbits. Two for five now in the evening for Sumner. It's been a struggle here in the first half for the Jackrabbit offense. That man is doing his part. Zach Zenner with another big hole off of that left side. They have just been opening up some gaping holes for their star running back. Brian Witzman at left tackle. We talked about his 48th career start. This is why the NFL likes that left tackle, and they're probably liking what they see from the running back as well. Tremendous jump cut in the hole right there, able to get in the open field. So both teams offensively starting to find more of a rhythm here as we work our way midway through the second quarter. Jackrabbits now into northern Arizona territory. First and 10 on the 40. Quick drop and a high throw intended for Schneider. Well, that's that matchup they want to take advantage of. I mean, he's got some good size out there on the perimeter. A lot of single coverage early on against Jason Schneider. And throughout this season, anytime he's gotten single coverage, he's normally produced with a big-time effort. But this NAU secondary is a whole different story. They feel comfortable leaving corners. Either one, one-on-one -on -one out on number 83. Schneider coming into today, 71 catches for 10 scores. So clearly the go-to guy for a summer. Here comes the pressure, and the pass is in and out of the hands of Connor Lambert, the redshirt freshman from Laguna Hills, California. Great blitz recognition from Austin Sumner. He's going to see the free runner coming. Got to make that catch. In a drive like this where you're trying to answer on second and ten, a chance to make it a third and very manageable. Now you're looking at a third and ten. Got to squeeze that one. Got to catch the football. Only one catch on the season coming into today for Landry. So now it's third and ten. South Dakota State does not want to see this drive stall here. Pressure up the middle. Sumner's going to stay on his feet. He's going to try and get the first down and then some. And he slides down at the 22-yard line. Taken down by Dozen and Battle, but what an athletic move by Sumner. You're going to play man to man coverage across the board. One of the biggest weapons you can have as a quarterback is your athletic ability. Avoid the rush, get out, and get that first down because all those defenders are looking at their man. They're guarding face to face. So if you can get out in the open field, there's a lot of green grass out there for you. Nice job, Austin Sumner. Back to back plays, recognizing the blitz and making a play. Yeah, Ryan reared at number 44, had him in the backfield, but could not wrap up. Sumner's got some good size as well, 6'5", 225. Another one of these juniors, so a lot of the firepower for this Jackrabbit offense. Kevin will be back next year because Zenner, Sumner, Schneider, all juniors. Exciting times for South Dakota State, no question. When you've got your quarterback and your running back, both already record-setting players, and they're just juniors, you could build things around them. And I'll tell you what, if they can find a way to rebuild this offensive line, they're going to lose three seniors next year. This offense is going to be one heck of a group. 
Yeah, Sumner, again, only a junior, 7,400 and plus passing yards coming into tonight. So that is the career leader for South Dakota State out of Brookings, South Dakota, founded back in 1881. There you see the enrollment. They're in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. Their playoff record, one and two. This is their third appearance. They had a win last year at home, but they lost in the second round. Stickelmeyer was around, Kevin, when they made the move from D2 to Division I AA, as it was called back then, in the 2004 season. Again, he's in his 17th season, so he is a fixture there and uh, has done a great job, much like North Dakota State moving from D2 to D1. First and 10, and they have had their issues off of that right side, so kudos to the Lumberjack defense as they stuff center on first down. For this Lumberjack defense, you talk a lot about Austin Haskett, but Ryan Reardon's a guy Defensive player of the year nationally had a 98 yard fumble return four tackles was all over the field Earlier on this season and when this linebacking core because they're allowed to be around the line of scrimmage so much Because the man-to-man -man coverage from this great secondary guys like Reardon and Haskett make a lot of tackles A lot of big-time plays for this lumberjack defense and they need one here try to force a third down and long second attempt from the 23 Zenner with the patience and the cut breaks the tackle inside the 10 taken down at the one yard line and loses the ball. Now was he down before the ball came out? And that's what the officials are saying, but a huge run by Zenner and they're knocking on the door. And he's still down, a little shaken up. Looked to me like that elbow did hit. Nope. It's going to be whether that knee was down because that football was out well before his knee, his elbow touch. So this is going to be interesting because that one looked very, very close to that knee possibly not being down. Extremely heady play. It looked like Dozier was the one that comes in. And that ball's out. That's a fumble, folks. Well, we have been told that this play is under review. Great. Ankle tackle, touchdown saving tackle by Dozier, but I think you're right, Kevin. The effort plays, and we saw the speed early on in this football game and coverage from Dozier, but to close like that as the free safety in the middle of the field and then get your hand on the football. Zach Zenner does not fumble the football at six foot 220. He's a big fella in the open field, so to chase him down and make a play like that if this ends up being a fumble which it looked to me yeah. like that knee was not down very close officials obviously taking a look at it they're going to see the same replays that we see on our screens and for you folks at home so obviously a huge play in this game seemed like the jackrabbits really got some momentum going sumner making some plays and then a chance to be first and goal at the one yard line where they have it marked now this ends up being a turnover we were waiting for that. Both these defenses, so many turnovers throughout this season. And let's take another look. Boy, that is close. That is close. I'm going to go ahead and say that football was out. And this is going to be first and 10 from the 20-yard line after the touchback for NAU. And a huge momentum play stopping what seemed to be and looked to be like a touchdown drive for the Jackrabbits. So right now it is spotted at the one. Again, your referee is Kevin Hassel, the instant replay official is Judson Howard. They are rightfully so, taking their time on this one. And you, know, you mentioned about turnovers. On the season, the Jackrabbits are plus 14. So they're not used to being in the situation where they could be on the losing end of a turnover. And, and this is huge because, I mean, their offense, Kevin, has struggled so mightily this first half. And when you're going to overturn this call, you're looking for that indisputable evidence. And to me, we see it right there when that ball comes out. Dozier chasing him down. There is still some open space between that left knee and the turf. Tremendous hustle play. And you notice multiple, ja multiple lumberjack defenders, I should say. They all have their eyes on the football. They expect that ball to come out. Well, they've only lost seven fumbles on the entire year, so let's uh, listen in and see what they decided. If they're ready. After further review, 
The ruling is that the ball was fumbled at the one yard line, recovered in the end zone by the defense. It is a touchback. It'll be first down for Northern Arizona at the 20 yard line. Coming off that touchdown drive for NAU to get the stop, no matter where it happened, you get that ball back for your offense. Now you start looking at game management, and we look at it one more time. That ball is clearly out. Tremendous shot by our guys in the truck and our cameramen getting that look from the goal line. Yeah, great job. You start thinking about situation now. 7.36 to go, second quarter, you've got the lead. This is the time where if Zach Bowman's going to have a seven or eight carry drive, you want to milk this clock and try to go in up possibly two scores. Andy Thompson walking along the sidelines like a seasoned veteran. And uh, this second quarter, he's gotten the breaks. Bowman with a touchdown. Now the turnover. Another huge play by Bowman. Still on his feet, nearly to midfield. And another big game for Zach Bowman after really being shut down, Cameron, on the first few drives here in the second quarter. He's gotten some daylight. Some of his best runs this season have come on the cutback. And look at the backside offensive linemen. They know that their running back will cut that thing back, and they need to be aware. And then when he gets in the open field, both these running backs, tremendous job yards after contact. He's not as big as Zenner at 200 pounds, but he sure is shifty. Over 5,000 career rushing yards. He broke that mark last week in the snow against Southern Utah. So another first down. Closing in on 100 yards for the day. Oh, and a big hit in the backfield. And still don't see who that is. Doug Pete, number 34. Say hello to this man. Tremendous hit off the edge. Look at him, bottom of your screen. Fire off the edge, avoid the block. Clean legal hit. We've called Doug Pete's name out a lot early on in this football game, and with Chase Douglas and Marshall Pugh on the other side, doesn't get a lot of the recognition, but the senior excited to be back in the FCS playoffs. Casey Young taken down for the one-yard loss, and so Bowman is back in. Play action. Poe again going downfield. Has a man open at the 25-yard line. That's another big play for Walker. Kyron Poe, and the confidence we've seen since that first completion to Deshaun Walker, comes off the fake. They get that front side protection picked up this time. And how about the 6'3 junior going up and getting that one? We've seen him come back for a football, making a tremendous catch, and now that one going up and getting it. The entire body language of not only their quarterback, but this entire Lumberjack team has been elevated now with this recent success. And plays like that will just open up everything else. The balance is key for both sides, and right now the Lumberjacks have it. Yeah, second quarter, all the momentum has gone to Northern Arizona. Poe flushed out of the pocket. He can run. Pushed out of bounds before he can get the first down, but that will bring up a second and manageable. And, and this is the difference between Poe and Cartwright when you get him in a situation where he needs to run. He can get positive yardage. Talking to the NAU coaches, this is what they like about him. You'll see a power rush there. Gets a little pressure in his face, avoids. Got to tuck that ball away, but when he gets out in the open field, he feels very comfortable running the football. And that's a lot of quarterbacks nowadays. Coming from a lot of these spread offenses in high school, these quarterbacks feel perfectly fine getting out in the open field and running. And you mentioned Chase Cartwright, the other quarterback, not as much of an athlete. They obviously want Kyron Poe's added athletic ability in, in this offense. Back in the red zone, that's second down and two. Poe scrambling. Rowing has a receiver. It's Walker again. Shifty little move to get inside the 10. And Northern Arizona trying to pad their lead here. Remember, they've had their struggles in the red zone so far this year. One of our Northwestern mutual keys to the game. Who's going to be the plan B for NAU on offense? It looks to me like Deshaun Walker has become that guy. I think they found it. Big plays downfield. His quarterback now scrambling, and he's finding that open area in the zone and helping Kyron Poe to get off to maybe one of his best starts so far we've seen this season. He started the last game against Southern Utah. Before that, Cartwright had four straight starts. But he is playing well tonight. It's first and goal. Bowman with the carry. He's got one score looking for another. Gang tackled at about the seven-yard line. Langer in on the stop. So now you look at the clock. you got four and a half to play here. 
you go up two scores here in the first half in a game like this, that's pretty big. Especially with the defense that you have. And they feel great playing from ahead because they have one of the best secondaries in the Big Sky, probably the best secondary in the Big Sky Conference. And you're playing at home, get a little crowd noise, and the turnovers might just start flowing for NAU. So big drive here. You'd love, once again, they scored the touchdown on their previous red zone trip. Can they get another one? Second and goal on the seven. This one's going to get blown dead before the play. Ball start. Offense, number 88. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Well, it's been a fairly clean first half. We've only had the one turnover on that replay, which was a good call. Needed team, though. He's had many penalties, and you like to see that at this point in the season. Yeah, 12, 11, 12 games in. These teams have played a lot of football, very comfortable with each other on both sides of the football, but that's a big penalty. And red zone penalties, penalties on third down, that's situational football. You really want to avoid those because now you're trying to punch this thing in from the 11 or 12 yard line as opposed to inside the 10. Poe with time, throwing into the end zone. Excellent defense, intended receiver is Cole, but uh, good defense that time. Let's have to go to state. Now we're going to see a third and ten as we take a look at the replay. Just trying to throw this thing up to the corner. You see Poe looking off the free safety. He has his one-on-one. -on -one. A lot of contact down the field, but they're not going to call that incidental. Nick Cole's got to try to get his feet underneath him and go up for that football. But here we go, third and goal. And if you're Kyron Poe, you've got to be smart. Your team has all the momentum in this football game. Three points here is not necessarily a bad thing. If you like it, take it, but don't make that mistake. Pressure, pass over the middle, chipped, and it is intercepted. And so the first turnover for the Jackrabbits as they get the pick. Great hands by the Jackrabbit defense, number 36, Jake Sherlock. And so all that momentum that the Lumberjacks have built up, and you just said it, Kevin, don't turn it over. Bang, bang play, trying to get a short completion. That's not going to get you in the end zone. And when you're throwing underneath into tight coverage, you got to be accurate. You make those receivers reach. That's exactly what's going to happen. Both of these defenses so opportunistic getting turnovers. That ball gets flipped up in the air. Too many sets of eyes on it. And that's a nice job by defensive end Jake Sherlock coming back and making that play for his first career interception, I believe. Yeah, first and, interception on the season. For sure. And it could not have come at a bigger time. And that's why we mentioned that mindset of a quarterback. Your team has the momentum. You've now just given South Dakota State a chance to come back and tie this football game. So first down and 10. And a big game by Zinner. Now there's a foot race along the sidelines. He could go all the way. He's got some blockers in front. You want to talk about momentum. How about that? Wow. Off the right side, we got to give Nick Purcell and Trevor Gregory, the offensive lineman, a lot of credit. We haven't seen a lot of big runs on the right side, but how about the speed? I mean, he's even with a couple of these defenders and turns on the Jets. I think his speed in the open field, a little bit underrated nationally, but what a run. And how about your leader? Comes back, you get the turnover, and on the next play, you take it back and tie this football game up. Momentum in these FCS playoff games are huge. When you have it, you've got to keep it. Wow. Well, one play drive. How about that? Seven all here with 3.14 to go in the first half. 21st touchdown of this season for Zenner. He now has 177 yards to go. A couple turnovers and then a 87-yard touchdown run. One play, 87 yards in 13 seconds. And how about the momentum swing? Third down and goal, you got to be smart with the football, especially against a defense that has forced 28 turnovers, fifth in the FCS. And when you've got a running back like this, third in the FCS in rushing yards, that's a big reason why. To be able to go 87 yards against this fast NAU defense, very impressive. And now situationally, we're back tied up, 314. You're Kyron Poe getting this football back where five, ten minutes ago, you might have had more confidence than you've had all season. One throw later, you might be thinking twice about making throws down the field now. Big time play by South Dakota State, and their defense is coming back on the field trying to get that ball right back. Lumberjacks will take a knee. Both running backs so far here in the first half have lived up to their billing because Bowman's got over 100 yards. He's at 103 on 12 carries, which seems a little pedestrian when you look at 
Zenner's numbers, 177 yards on 15 carries. We expected to see big, big days out of both of these running backs, no question. The bell cows of both of these offenses, and, and we wondered what would happen. Yep, there you go. After one turnover, you thought Kyron Poe was playing a pretty smart football game up until that, but we've got Chase Cartwright, the junior, into the football game. Yeah, you see his numbers, 64% completion percentage, and only eight touchdowns with two interceptions. So those numbers are key because what a few picks this year for Poe. So we thought we would see two quarterbacks. Here you go. And now a little flea flicker. Cartwright's going to try and throw a block, and he misses it. And a great defensive play by the Jackrabbits. They saw that one coming. Dallas Brown, the redshirt freshman from Tucson, Arizona. A little bit undersized, that linebacker. But what he makes up for in size, he obviously does in speed. Look at him close. Trying to get a big-time play on the reverse. We've seen a lot of pursuit from this SDSU defense early on in this game, but fundamentally sound, well-coached football team. They have somebody staying at home on the backside. Well, Cartwright came in back in October. They were down big time at Sacramento State in the fourth quarter. He rallied them to a huge comfort behind win. Had a couple starts after that. Those two, Poe and Cartwright, have been kind of going back and forth in terms of who starts as Bowman gets the carry. So now you're looking at a third and long for Cartwright, who has spent most of the first half, Kevin, on the bench. I know you didn't spend much time on the bench, but for a quarterback to get thrown in this situation, what's going through his mind? Absolutely. I had quite a bit of experience as a backup quarterback in the National Football League where you just never know when your number is going to call. And I'm, and I'm sure Cartwright obviously expected to play in this football game. He's had some success this year. And you mentioned that Sacramento State game. Yep. He came into that game and went 16 of 19 for 208 yards and those three touchdowns and willed his team back to victory. So it's obvious that this NAU team and the coaching staff has a lot of faith in their backup quarterback, the junior from Chandler, Arizona. So interested to see what the play call is here on third and long. Stay with us at the half. We'll have first round FCS action. Highlights of our first half as well as stats. We'll try and get you all caught up on today's first round action in the FCS playoffs. We imagine that Coach Sowers is uh, watching this game as we speak. So thoughts and prayers go out to him. Hopefully. Uh, whatever he is suffering through right now is not that serious. And, uh, who knows, perhaps he's even on the phone to the press box and trying to put in his, his two cents. But here you go, big play for Cartwright and the Lumberjack offense. And they're going to keep it on the ground on third and 20. Trying to get a Superman performance from Bowman. And perhaps that's just a bit of, hey, let's cut our losses here with 220 to, uh, to go in the first half. Some people call it a give up draw, a give up run there, but I can tell you at third and 20, as a quarterback, when you're just coming into the game, possibly attempting your first throw, that's the last thing you want to have to do is complete a third and 20 and move the chain. So, like the play call, smart right there. Punt this thing away and see if your defense, that has been very good for you all season long, can go get a stop and, and get you into halftime tied up. Well, a smile on the face of Coach Stiglmeyer now as he sees things switch up. One other score for you. And the other game that's going on right now, Jacksonville State up big over Samford. That's in the second quarter, 24 to nothing. So the winner will face McNeese State uh, next Saturday. That will be on ESPN3. So you got to go back to that uh, fumble there, Kevin, on the one-yard line where you know, the Jackrabbits had a chance to get on the board early. And boy, you just thought, oh my gosh, yeah, their offense, they finally get in scoring position. They get the turnover. But then you capture Lightning in Nevada with the interception, the long touchdown run. Now they're going to get the ball back, and they could go into halftime with the lead. Back at the 23 yard line, no fair catch and great coverage by the Lumberjacks. And so South Dakota State. We'll have 213 left. They got to go about to almost 80 yards. Interesting first half, though. Both offenses come out, scuffle early, defenses look strong, and then you start to see the running game get going. Passing game opens up for NAU. A little bit of back and forth, but turnovers. They've been huge all year for both of these teams. And in games that they've won the turnover margin, almost the entire time of this season, they've won the football game. Yeah, that kick by Poe, that was his eighth interception of the season to go along with six touchdown passes. So now you've got the ball in the hands of Austin Sumner, and he has really struggled in the first half. 
And it has been Zenner who has picked up the offensive load. Not in the game right now. Sumner with an open receiver, and it's a good look. Catch is made by number 80. That is Trevor Wesley, the sophomore. Another Arizona product, so they've got some Arizona players that are really contributing. Trevor Wesley working the seam against man-to-man -man coverage. That's a tremendous throw by Austin Sumner, fitting that in between the corner and the safety. Sumner now trying to get out of trouble on the run goes out of bounds that will stop the clock at about 152 so he got some yards on that one again you got to keep your eye on the clock got to get to the 45 for the first down athletic ability again at the quarterback position the two minute drill the two minute situation if you can make out and get extra yards and more importantly stop that clock it can be so valuable for not only your offense but your play caller being able to be aggressive on the next play Second and seven. Gandy behind Summer. Trying to buy time. And has a receiver right near the first down marker, but that one was out of bounds. Good coverage by the Lumberjack secondary. Dosen was right there with the coverage. We've seen predominantly man-to-man -man this entire first half from NAU. Once again, crossing route. Schneider looks like very close to making that play. They might rule that incomplete. Well, you've got a flag down on the field, and both coaches do have a challenge. If they win that first challenge, they get another. Holding defense. Ten-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Keeps the drive alive. It's been interesting to see where they line up Jason Schneider in the formation versus all this man-to-man -man coverage. And NAU not matching Anders' battle like we thought, their top corner on him. And you'll see the very bottom right portion of your screen. There's the hold right there. It actually wasn't on Schneider. It was on Tiefenthal, I think. They're number 84, if that's the correct number. And I saw that replay. So now you got first and 10. 145, Sumner with plenty of time and an open receiver and he underthrows it and it's intercepted in the end zone. Anders Battle, all big sky senior from Phoenix with the pick. Anders Battle, you wonder when you'd hear his name called. I'll tell you what though, Sumner a little late. You never want to be late with throws down the middle and against this NAU secondary, we talked about the speed and the recovery ability. Well, look who it was again, Lucky Dozier, a guy that seems to be around the football constantly, one of their big-time leaders, along with Anders Battle from Desert Vista High School. These two guys, you cannot be late with the football, and Sumner knows better. He had them early. Great recovery, though, from this NAU defense, and once again, getting a big-time stop for their team. The momentum just continues to go back and forth in this football game. Yeah, Wesley was open. That's the second pick of this season for Battle. So two turnovers now for South Dakota State with 137 on the clock as they hand off to Bowman. And again, it looks like they're not really putting a whole lot of faith in Cartwright. I mean, they're not, they're not calling timeouts. They're just letting this thing run out. They're on the 20. You wonder if it's a product of possibly having a defensive coordinator making the head coaching role <laughs> the decisions here today just because you make the decision to put Cartwright in, obviously, after the turnover. But if you're going to put him out there, let him throw the football. Because if he's going to be your guy in the second half, you'd love to allow him to find a rhythm here late in the first half. They got a couple timeouts left. And they got under a minute to go. It's second and nine. Bowman will get the carry again. And so the crowd here in Flagstaff watching their first FCS playoff game in a decade. Not exactly happy with this play, Colin, but for Bowman now, he's had a fantastic first half. He's up to 115 yards, averaging 7.7 .7 per carry. And I think you're going to continue to see this game plan come to life here in the second half. If it's Cartwright or if it's Poe, they're going to have to throw the football enough to open things up because once they completed that downfield pass, it really seemed to open up the entire football field for Bowman. All right, well, you tell me, Mr. Quarterback, you, you take Poe out because maybe his confidence is a little bit shaken. I think now you've got two quarterbacks who don't have much confidence. Great point. 
And Bowman is going to lose some yards here on third and nine. And that will do it for the first half. So it has been close throughout. And it's a seven to seven score here at the walk up Sky Dome. Northern Arizona trying to move on to the second round for the first time in a long time. And the Jackrabbits trying to get there for the second straight year. Stick around your halftime coming up. Now we are ready for the halftime. 7-7 seven seven is our score here from Flagstaff. Stay with us. Game will take on the Eagles of Eastern Washington. They won the Big Sky Conference this year. They were undefeated in conference play. Remember, they started off with a bang. They beat Oregon State 49-46. Same weekend that North Dakota State beat Kansas State. So that big FCS weekend against FBS teams. And well, they were the last team to win it all besides North Dakota State. Absolutely, and you see they're third in the FCS in pass yards, fourth in total offense. Their quarterback, Vernon Adams, another special player. Keep your eye on him, folks. Number one in total offense in the big sky. The Vernon Adams has been tremendous. Yeah, they dodged a bullet their last regular season game of the year when they uh, beat Portland State by one point. Our halftime coverage from Northern Arizona continues right after this. Kyron Poe, the quarterback for Northern Arizona, who got pulled late in the second quarter. He finally got things going, hooked up with Walker for a big game, then ball to Negro, and that set up the big fellow, Zach Bowman. The pass game really opened up running lanes for Zach Bowman, and when he got near the end zone, as he did on this drive for the touchdown, he found it. Open field tackling. Each defense needs to focus on that against these great running backs. And with that score, he set a new scoring record for Northern Arizona. And then the turnover, Sherlock with the interception as NAU was knocking on the door, then an 87-yard touchdown run by Zetter. When you lose the momentum, how, f how fast it can turn on you, 87 yards later, you're tied. Lumberjacks might, might be thinking. NAU history had another fantastic first half. He's over 100 yards. Then you look at rushing for South Dakota State. I mean, again, that is almost all Zach Zenner because he has 177 of those yards. But look at turnovers. Turnovers, obviously, South Dakota State with the two crucial turnovers in northern Arizona territory when they're going into score. NAU, they got to get a little bit better on third down. Third down conversion as well, 0 for 6 for northern Arizona. But this was the one that they replayed, and it was a good call. It was. They overturn it. Dozier chasing that play down and then third down inside the red zone you get that ball tipped up in the air Sumner was a little late on this interception they looked like they were going down the field on the two minute drill for some points but here we are 7-7 tied at the half so let's revisit now planning for success and let's take a look at the Jackrabbits their balance on offense uh, not so much it's not where they want it Austin Sumner 3 of 10 with the I the INT only 46 passing yards Looks like he's going to have to make some plays against this NAU secondary if this offense wants to be at its best and win this football game. And defensively, minus one right now. Does that change? Are they able to come out and get the ball back for their offense? And for NAU, they got to like what they've seen. We asked, who would that plan B be? And so far, it's been Deshaun Walker. Three receptions for 74 yards getting down the field. And defensively, two huge turnovers when it looked like they were possibly going to give up points there in the second quarter so Andy Thompson interim head coach tonight for Jerome Sowers obviously has to be happy with his defense getting the turnovers they'll probably look to start trying to figure out a way to shut down the South Dakota State run game all right planning for a success brought to you by Northwestern Mutual and for Andy Thompson and his first night as head coach he's got a decision ahead of him who does he start a quarterback in the second half Poe or Cartwright our score at the half is seven all second half coming up Half for your quarterback, Austin Sumner. How do you get things going for him in the second half? It's passing in his career. He started, you know, as a freshman. He's now a junior. And, boy, what a nightmare first half. Been late with the football a couple times. We've seen a lot of tight man-to-man -man defense from northern Arizona. Austin Sumner needs to get back through on his drop, get through his progression, and be on time with the football. Because if his guys get open, they're not going to be open very long because NAU has a great ability to recover with that speed and athleticism. Well, you talked about the top of the broadcast about who would be plan B for Northern Arizona. Really, I guess at this point, the Jackrabbits need to come up with plan B. Kyron Poe, though, an excellent first half, 6 of 10, 104 yards. He did have the one pick, a great defense by the Jackrabbits to come up with that, but really only one bad decision, right? 
I thought he played a good first half. That one play, third down and goal in the red zone, you'd like to have that throw back. But interesting to see the decision of the half for interim coach Thompson is to decide what quarterback he's going to go with because they've got to rally around the guy. He decides go down with this opening drive. Get a, get a score. Yeah, what a contrast because you've got uh, Thompson, first ever head coaching duties, and this really harkens back, believe it or not, with Jerome Sowers in 1996 because Sowers was an assistant at Montana for a number of years. I think it was 12 before he came to Northern Arizona. Their head coach, Mick Dennehy, was sidelined after major surgery for two games, and Sowers stepped in and led the Grizz to two wins uh, against Cal State Northridge and Portland State. So now you fast forward to, what, about 17 years later, Sowers is the one who had the surgery, and Thompson is now the head coach. Sowers in his 16th season here in Flagstaff. 93 wins, that's the most in school history. And second Big Sky, uh, behind the legendary Chris Alt at Nevada, back when they were the Big Sky with 111. And so uh, it's just a fascinating story for Coach Thompson, who played football at the University of Montana in the Big Sky. And so it will be Lumberjack Ball now to start things off in the second half. And so it is number 15 who's coming out onto the field. All right, so now we know who's going to start here in the second half, Kevin. Are, are they going to take the handcuffs off? Very limited play calling there late in the half, trying to protect him a little bit. When he did come into the game against Sacramento State in the second half, they let him loose and throw the football down the field, sideline to sideline, and I think they need to do that because until they start throwing the football again, this South Dakota State defense is going to hone in on Zach Bowman. They're going to let him throw on first down. It was a high snap and a high throw intended for number 89. That is Bo Gardner, another big tight end, 6'4", 240. Not a pretty play to start the half. High snap, you mentioned, trying to throw the quick game. That's your worst nightmare as a quarterback to get that high snap. And then not only that, to get the tipped ball by the SDSU defender. So try to get him an early completion, get him going here. You don't want to fall too far behind the sticks, though, on second down. Bowman goes in motion and they hand it off and it's a short game for number 42 that is Casey Yon the sophomore running back who got leveled by Pete in the first half on that big hit so he's had his struggles on his limited carries here tonight Chase Cartwright you're walking into your huddle here on third and ten not exactly where you wanted to be to start out the half hasn't thrown a completion yet and they need one from him right here to convert this third down and get this drive going. Third and ten. Just underway here, second half. Pete was showing pressure, and now you have the left tackle that moved a bit too early. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense, number 74, five yard penalty, still third down. The senior, Kyle Walker. Trying to get off to a quick start there against Marshall Pugh, the senior on the other side who has six sacks this year for the Jackrabbits. So third down, obvious passing situation. Trying to cheat a little bit, get out on his pass pro a little early. Boy, this drive to start the second half, Lumberjacks look like they're back on their heels. you got two wide receivers to the top of the screen. Cartwright looks that way. Nobody open, and he's taken down for the sack in the backfield. Big number 69, that is Marshall Pugh, and you just mentioned it. That's a seventh sack, and you talked about Cartwright versus Poe. You lose some athleticism in the pocket, the ability to make plays with your feet. That's a coverage sack right there, three-man rush. You'd like to try to find a way to get that blocked. Only three guys coming at your quarterback, but doesn't make a big mistake. But the sack stalls the drive, and they'll give the football to the Jackrabbits here early on in the third quarter. This should be excellent field position. They're going to let this one bounce, and it's going to roll out of bounds at about the 37-38 yard line. Got to make sure you get out of the way of that one. Again, the very instructive uh, play happened to the Broncos the other night. Uh, and on the punt return coverage, somebody got uh, hit the ball. It's a big no-no. They actually had a similar play last week against Youngstown State. Ball hit one of the uh, blockers on the punt return team, and gave the Youngtown State offense a short field that they were able to convert for a touchdown. So that's obviously something that they're working on. Well, that was a huge win for the Jackrabbits. Huge first half for Zach. 177 yards, one TD. 
They beat Youngstown State 42-13. Really looked at that game as a must win to get into the playoffs and have a 5-3 conference record. And on first down, they're going to give it to Zenner. They're going to try and test the left side of that line again. And he is met by Austin Haskett, the leading tackler for the Lumberjacks. Haven't mentioned him much tonight. Offensive line from South Dakota State has been able to dominate the line of scrimmage at times and Haskett and Reardon. These linebackers need to try to find a run in open space and make plays. If they're going to have a chance to slow down Zenner and it looks like the defense is going to have to be like they've been all season long, the momentum grabbers for this Lumberjack team. Second and eight from the 41. And Haskett shows pressure and that leaves a hole open for Zenner and he exploits it. Stop just short of midfield. So now you got third and manageable. Third and manageable. We've seen a ton of man to man. Lumberjacks start out again. Two straight plays defensively in this first half in straight man to man. A safety in the middle of the field. These guys have a lot of responsibility. And I can tell you that South Dakota State went into that locker room and they were trying to find ways to get these guys open. And here we see it. Two stacked receivers early on. That's one of the ways you can beat man to man coverage. Third and six. Here comes pressure. Sumner chased by Wilkinson and has to just throw that one away. Big number 90, Tim Wilkinson, all big sky. Five and a half sacks on the year. He put the pressure on Sumner. Trying to work crossing routes with Jason Schneider across the field, but you said it. Tim Wilkinson from his inside position, five and a half sacks on the year. Just straight power rush, gets inside. And they had multiple free runners on Austin Sumner. We've given a lot of credit early on to this secondary from NAU, but how about that front four making life uncomfortable for Austin Sumner there in the first half? Sumner just does not look comfortable tonight. It has been a tough night for that young man. So fourth and six, Sawyer on to punt, and the two punters tonight have really taken advantage of this thin air. They have had a fantastic evening. Got a fair catch at the 15. So special teams play for both of these teams. As done an excellent win. You've got the Lumberjacks of Northern Arizona with the ball again here. Second series on offense in the second half. You've got Cartwright out there. First series, they looked like they were completely back on their heels. Well, they're 0-7 on third down, and they've had a couple third and forevers, and that comes down to first and second down. They need to have some success. If you're going to run the football, run the football. If you're going to let Cartwright throw it, give him some early completions, try to set up third and manageables. They go to their star, Bowman, who has met at the line of scrimmage. Right there is Cole Langer. The freshman, now he's a uh, third-generation Jackrabbit, because again, I mentioned his father, Tracy, played baseball there, and his, his grandfather is an NFL Hall of Famer. Jim played for the Dolphins. You know, if they keep going to Bowman, Kevin, you look ahead here for this second half. That Jackrabbit defense, you know, with Cartwright in there, maybe his confidence, coaching staff confidence in him, not there. They're just going to start stacking the box. And they will find a way, I would think, to shut down Bowman unless you get him on the flat like this. He is their leading receiver, so how about that? The run gets shut down, and like that on cue, you get Bowman in the backfield, and there is your open space. So many creative ways to get him out in space. You run the slip screen. They're actually setting this thing up with blockers downfield in that move. We've seen a couple of them today. Just ankle-breaking move from Zach Bowman. And that's the way you have to do it. It's not going to be your traditional running game against a loaded box like we were just talking about. If there's going to be seven or eight defenders inside that tackle box trying to shut down the run, move number 34 around the formation and let him be the playmaker that he is. Nice throw for Cartwright to perhaps build a little bit of confidence in him. Now you got play action. Plenty of time. And the time runs out. Chase Douglas chases him down. 270 pounder, the senior from Brandon, South Dakota. Cartwright, not quite the athlete. And you see when he steps up there, he did have Bowman. You're going to see him leak out in the flat late on this play. Just not much there. And penetration, you, you feel like this defense of the Jackrabbits are really starting to gain some confidence attacking the line of scrimmage both in the run and pass game. Got to find a way to shore up that protection, especially if you're going to go with the less mobile quarterback. Yeah, eighth stack of the season for Douglas leads the team. So second and 15, quick throw. 
catch is made. Positive yards after the catch, but the ball is loose. And was he down, or is this another turnover? The catch was made by Alex Holmes, and that is another turnover. Easy completion play, just a hitch route out to Alex Holmes. Ball security against these turnover type defenses. And look at that, Winston Wright, their leader on defense. Yep. Yep. They look for him all the time. And you see who came up with it as well, R.C. Kilgore. Their two defensive leaders just made a huge play in this football game to give their offense a short field. Wow, big time play and ball security. It's got to be important as you see the turnover matchup. So big, we've talked about it as a key to the game all day long. It's now tied up 2-2. So now you got great field position for the Jackrabbits. They're on the 41 yard line. Sumner, nowhere to go with it. Flushed out, finally throws it out of bounds, and this one may have been picked off as well. A great diving catch is made by Battle, but was he in bounds? Thompson is there to argue the call. I, I think, think they're going to say he's out of bounds. I think they're going to say his right shoulder comes down on the line, which it looks like it did, but that is a tough call right there. Let's see if this gives us a little bit better look. Completely laying out tremendous athletic play. An amazing catch. Did that left side come down a little bit ahead? Are they going to challenge? Doesn't look like they're going to take another look at it. Well, Austin Sumner just can't buy a break tonight. Just trying to get rid of the ball. Nearly throws another interception. It's second and ten. They dodge a bullet. And now Zenner can't get much on second down. Now you're looking at third along. It's really been remarkable what Zenner's been able to do tonight because, like we talked about on the other side, with Zach Bowman facing loaded boxes, seven, eight-man fronts, it's happening on this side of the football as well. NAU has all kinds of people around the line of scrimmage. They are playing straight man-to-man -man and allowing seven and eight guys to chase around number 31, Zach Zenner. Can they get open versus man-to-man? -man? It's been the story for the entire day for the passing game for South Dakota State. Jack Rabbits have been good on third down all season. Not so tonight. Sumner still nowhere to throw and they're taken down. Number 50 with the stack, Steven Garcia, the senior out of Downey, California. I'll tell you what, Andy Thompson, I know he's the interim head coach, but he's a heck of a defensive coordinator. Comes back third and ten, plays zone, a lot of moving parts, confusing. Austin Sumner, obviously, decided to tuck that thing and take off, but tremendous design on that defense on third and long, creating all kinds of confusion for the Jackrabbit offense. Well, you've got a number of guys on the Northern Arizona team, first, second, third team, all big sky, but they really feel like Garcia is uh, their defensive leader. And he comes up with a huge play at a huge time. And now you got flags down. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, number 38, five yard penalty, still fourth down. Well, that's only the second penalty of the game for the Jackrabbits. NAU's got four. Again, they're a team that does not get penalized very much. And so Jake Gentile just got a little antsy. And that penalty doesn't kill you. If anything, it gives you a little bit more room to try to pump this thing and down it inside the 10. Another high snap and nearly blocked. They went after that one. And this one's going to bounce at about the two yard line. And they down it at the three. Great special teams playing. I believe that was Gentile, number 38, who was the one that batted in the air. Can't execute it much better. And you've got an offense that's struggling. There's no more serious recipe for disaster than putting them at their own two-yard line. They nearly get the block, but the Lumberjacks will have the ball. We're tied up. Zach Center, one of the stories of our games. We're tied up at 7 all. Here are some of the other scores from around the nation in the first round of the FCS. Furman wins, and they get to take on the Bison, two-time defending champs. Coastal Carolina also with the win. Now you've got Northern Arizona with the ball, 97 yards to go for a score. 
And now it make it about 97 and a half or 98. Half the distance to the goal. Remains first down. Backed up situations. You're always going to try to have them jump offside, see if you can get five yards. Doesn't really hurt you too bad, only goes back about a half a yard. Yeah, a couple blowouts in the lower half of that bracket, New Hampshire and San Houston State moving on. So now you've got 99 yards to go for the go-ahead score. Bowman out of the end zone. Or will he get out of the end zone? And he will not. And a huge safety by the Jack Rabbit defense. That man has been all over the field. DJ Lally leads the team in tackles today. The lateral pursuit. You see the entire defense practically for the Jack Rabbits are in the end zone chasing Zach Bowman. Just tons of penetration. You see Chase Douglas right there almost gets him to start the play. Wow, big time play. You force that field position. You're going to be safe, conservative with those play calls. You better get out of the end zone. Zach Bowman just trying to make a little bit too much happen right there. Well, you know, and Kevin, I got to have a feeling that the Jackrabbit defense was licking their chops because they could see what you and I have seen. They knew Cartwright wasn't going to throw out the end zone. They knew that Lumberjack coaching staff wasn't going to let him. You come out in a two tight end formation. It looks like run all the way. If you're not going to go play action and take a shot, there's really nothing else you can do offensively besides hand that football off. And they were able to get him not only in the end zone, but they got looked like all 11 hats to the ball in yeah. the end zone. Well, now when we see Poe back out on the field, we have been told that he's not injured. However, you look at him grimacing, trying to loosen up that wing, and maybe he is a little banged up, and it may have happened on that interception, maybe trying to make a tackle. We have not seen him since that play, and it definitely looks like he's dealing with some sort of a rib or maybe shoulder. That's pure speculation at this point. We have not gotten an update, like we said. Like you just said, he is, according to the NAU staff, healthy right now, but he really was playing well. He was moving the football, and that athleticism, what was really making things work for this offense, both in run and pass. So obviously they've gone to Cartwright, and it looks like they're sticking with him, maybe because of an injury. Jack Rabbits will field this one at the 21. They've got some room to make a nice return out to midfield, still on their feet and taken down inside the 40 and what a spark by Butler. Tight football game sometimes evenly matched teams offense and defense. The determining factor can be special teams. We saw them down the punt inside the five and now a great punt return coming off the safety giving them great field position once again. And have you ever seen this? He's grabbing Schneider's jersey. Look at that. He's following his lead blocker. You, you go back to the old school tape of running backs like Earl Campbell, <laughs> Emmett Smith, some of these guys. They used to grab on to those guys in front of them. Nobody can get you if you got your lead blocker right in front of you. Oh, what a great shot. And now the momentum has clearly swung back to the Jackrabbits. They're on the 39. Zenner. Nifty little move on first down, and just that little shift picks up positive yardage. You got a second and short now, tackled inside the 35. All day long we've seen him when almost it looks like there is nothing there, no hole whatsoever. Most of the time on the right side, finding yards and yards after contact. That looked like he's going to be stopped for no gain, and here we are, second and five. Closing in on 200 yards on the afternoon, or the evening, I should say, at 190. They're going to give it to him again. This may be 200, and then some. Maybe it's the go-ahead score, and he's not tackled along the sideline. Touchdown, center, his second of the game. I'll tell you what, when he does get a hole, that explosiveness is impressive to watch. The 87-yarder, very similar play here. You'll see the fullback out in front. Tight end Vince Benedetto gets a block enough on the penetrating linebacker, and then just enough speed. This is a fast defense from NAU. So for Zach Zenner to twice tonight, get in the open field, and then just flat out outrun the Lumberjack defense. Very, very impressed by his speed in the open field. Surprising to see Dozier number 20 
missed that tackle about the 10 yard line. So the extra point is good. And it is a 16 to 7 score. So there you see Zenner with the upper body strength. His second score, 16 to 7. And all facets of the game have taken part in this momentum swing. This game has been defined by the momentum swings. And this doesn't register as a turnover, but it might as well. Two points and gives you the ball right back. Huge play by the Jackrabbit defense. And then Jerian Butler with Schneider as his lead blocker. Big time punt return that leads to the touchdown run by Zach Zenner. Once again, the burst in the open field has been extremely impressive. And the momentum swings. Can NAU find a way to turn this thing back around? Doesn't seem like they've got their quarterback Kyron Poe in the game. Is he going to come back in? Big question marks right now for the Lumberjacks. Center now 222 yards on 20 carries. He's got the two touchdowns and he's averaging over 11 yards a carry. And you know, he's probably just like a lot of other college kids that see Bowman getting a lot of the publicity. Maybe he came into this game and said, hey, wait a minute, guys. You know, don't sell me short. I may be up here in South Dakota, but watch me. And now we're going to watch Cartwright as he is still out here in the third quarter. 6.49 left in the third. If you're going to have a chance to win this football game if you're Northern Arizona, you've got to try to find a way to get him comfortable in the pocket. And they have really figured out Bowman here. You had the safety moments ago, and now this is a huge loss on first down and 10. And i got to think it's probably because they just know that Cartwright the, the, the Lumberjack staff does not have confidence in them. Well, these plays are being made by linebackers in the backfield. You'll see Elmore comes in number 29 to go along with Douglas. And Pete, we've been calling Doug Pete's name all day. That penetration comes from guys leaning forward at the snap, expecting run, and they're maybe reacting to pass, but they are thinking run, run, run with Bowman right now. We heard the coach say it at halftime, but that's what they expected. Yeah, number 64, Jacob Julian, is really having a hard time with Douglas. And again, there you go. Douglas seemed like he was nearly untouched as Cartwright goes down at about the six-yard line. Douglas has been impressive all day long. His eighth sack of the season. It almost seems like he's unblocked at this point. He actually beat Roy Garcia, second-team All-Big Sky center right there. So that is an impressive inside pass rush. Those three techniques, they don't get a lot of credit lining up in the interior, a lot of times taking on double teams. But for a guy like that to have eight sacks on the season, that's an explosive player inside. I think that might now put him at nine because he's at two tonight. Hasn't wow, he? nine yep. sacks. Yep. Either way, he leads the team. Now you're looking at third and 28. So this is another dangerous situation because they're not far from the end zone. They're going to give it to Bowman and just try and cut their losses. And who knows what Bowman will be able to do with this play. Arm tackled at about the 10-yard line. And so we we thought, Kevin, that we had plan B solved for the Lumberjacks in the first half. But now it looks like they need to come up with another plan B here in the second. Have not even mentioned Dejon Walker's name, the receiver. Three receptions for 74 yards that really opened up the field for this Lumberjack offense. And now you're looking at the sideline, the crowd, this entire, the body language of anybody wearing navy blue right now is not good. No confidence whatsoever. Can this defense find a way to get the momentum back? Because that Jackrabbit sideline is excited right now. And they feel like they're on the way to winning this football game. Great punt, but Butler just had a great return. Muffs this one. And is down at the 31-yard line. So that one ended before it could begin. Wilder has really bailed out the Lumberjack offense on a number of occasions tonight. And we also have laundry on the field. Well, I'm not great at reading lips, but I could tell holding that was pretty obvious and I could tell which way he pointed. So that's going to go against the Jackrabbits. Again, the winner of this game will face Eastern Washington up in Cheney on the Inferno, that red turf. The winner of the other game going on right now, Jacksonville State and Sanford, they'll take on number six, McNeese State. The other half of that bracket is set. You've got Townsend and Ford. And then a rematch in the Ohio Valley with Eastern Illinois and Tennessee State. A couple of really good quarterbacks on that side of the bracket. Jimmy Garoppolo at Eastern Illinois and Vernon Adams at Eastern Washington. It has a lot of people thinking that that might produce the FCS championship. If it's not going to be North Dakota State, everybody's favorite up in Fargo. 
First and ten for the Jackrabbit offense. Sumner continues to struggle. They're going to give it to Gandy this time on first down. And Gandy breaks the tackle. Still on his feet. A number of missed tackles by this Lumberjack defense as he drags the secondary all the way out to the 45-yard line. Carrying defenders all the way down the field. Tremendously tough running from Reggie Gandy, 5'9", 195 pounds, doing his best Zach Center impression right here. And you see NAU guys trying to come in for the strip. But that can't happen 20, 25 yards down the field. you got to get him on the ground. Huge gain on first down for the backup Reggie Gandy. Yeah, you see he's had limited touches this season, but he's made the most of his opportunities, averaging over five a carry. First and ten from the 44. Give it to him again. Why not? Knocked short right at the line of scrimmage. Good hit by Blair Wisham. He had that pick six last week against Southern Utah. Safeties for Northern Arizona starting to sell out. Wisham up at the line of scrimmage making that tackle. You just got to think to yourself, haven't called Jason Schneider's name in yep. a while. They've done a nice job defending this receiver core from South Dakota State. But if you continue to try to sell out and stop this running game and try to get off the field, are you going to be susceptible to the big play through the air? Summers got two wide receivers, lower portion of your screen. Zenner will get the carry. And so that is going to bring up a third and long situation. But you're still in a good spot. You're at about the 46-yard line. You got yourself a nine-point lead. So this is kind of a situation where, you know, Sumner's had a, had a very difficult game. You don't want him to press and make a bad decision. And it'll tell you a lot about what this South Dakota State coaching staff thinks of their junior quarterback. Are they going to allow him to drop back, read the defense, and if it's not there, know that he'll throw that football away? Or do you just run the ball and play it safe with the momentum on your side? Crowd getting into it here. Third quarter winding down. Lumberjacks are in trouble. Here comes pressure. Zenner's got to get rid of it. And it is caught for the first down. What a huge play for the Jackrabbits. Brandy Hubert, one of the captains, the senior from Nebraska, makes the catch. Austin Sumner's had a tough day today. But look at him stand in, pressure in his face. And how about that throw? Off your back foot, tremendously dangerous. Could have easily gone the other way, but has the trust in the senior Hubert, one of their captains, like you said. And that's a huge conversion, keeping the momentum with the Jackrabbits. Big time play. Second leading receiver on the team behind Schneider. That was Marcus Alford, number 22 for Northern Arizona, that was thinking pick six. Now, Sumner's thinking six on the other end. As he goes for Tifatol, we haven't called his name much since he got dinged pretty hard there in the first half. But there it was, taking your shot down the field. Single coverage like they've had most of the day outside. And it was a good throw. That ball just seems, seems to be coming out of his hand a little bit better, a little bit more confidence. And isn't it amazing? One play, that third down conversion, one play can get you back feeling better about yourself, confident. And when you're talented like Austin Sumner, that next play in his mind might be six points. All right, you, you got to have amnesia as a quarterback because he's four for 14 right now. His last two throws, though, were pretty good. Second and ten. Gandy gets the call. He had that big game moments earlier. It's down to about the 40. So you're looking at another third down situation for this Jackrabbit offense. Now let's talk about the Lumberjack defense, Kevin, because with the way their offense has been playing here, time winding down on the third, this is a big play. Absolutely. They need to be not so much thinking about the big play, but they need to be thinking about getting off the field. If you're going to play man coverage, you've got to latch on to your receiver that you're assigned to cover. Do not give up anything right here because any kind of catch and run against man-to-man -man coverage, which it looks like it's going to be once again, pressed up. Jack Rabbit's three for nine on third down this evening. Gandy's going to get it, and he's not going to get the first down. Met by two lumberjack defenders. Let's give the tackle to Garcia, number 50. So now you're at fourth down. The ball's on the 38-yard line. What do you do? To me, that play call screamed out four down territory. They might end up using a timeout right here, but on fourth and four, now it looks like they're going to bring on the punt team. But that play, third down six, third down and seven, 
obviously continuing to play the field position game. It worked for him the last time, getting that safety, yep. pinning that ball. Let's see if the special teams can execute and pin the Lumberjacks deep again. Thank you. So on fourth and four, penalty markers down. False start again. We saw that in the first half. We just saw it on the previous punt as well. And yep. I don't want to say that they're doing it on purpose to try to give themselves a little bit more room. Quite a coincidence. But uh, it does help to have that extra yardage. It's not easy to pin that thing down from the 35 yard line. Sawyer so far this evening has been fantastic. He's averaging over 44 yards a punt. This one he wants to pin down and he gets nailed as the Lumberjacks go for the block. This one's going to come back. An easy call for the referee right in front of him. And so Lumberjacks had played well special teams. That's a big mistake. Well, Kevin Hassel's microphone not working, but here you go. And this is the personal foul variety. No question about it. If you're going to sell out to block that kick, you got to take a little bit better angle. And obviously, well, that's Chima Ike. We haven't talked about him much. The senior from Walnut, California. Third team all big sky in there on special teams trying to make something happen. And oh boy, he's getting an earful. And just a backbreaker for you because your defense has been on the field the majority of this third quarter, starting to wear down a little bit. Zach Zanner's had a huge game, and I imagine we're going to see a heavy dose of him right here. But more importantly, the clock. We're starting to work our way towards the fourth quarter. No momentum on your side if you're NAU. And really, with the running game that South Dakota State's been able to put together today, is it going to matter that they really haven't gotten much of a pass game going? So now the ball's on the 27. It's first and 10. There goes Zenner. He's got an opening. Drags a tackler with him, but not before he moves the chains. And it's another jackrabbit first down. That will probably be the last play of the first quarter, unless South Dakota State wants to try and hurry up the call play. And I don't think it's going to happen. 200. And 23 yards for Zach Zenner on the evening to go along with two touchdowns. We've got one quarter left to play here in Northern Arizona. 60 to 7, your score. 7, our score here, start of the fourth quarter. The Jackrabbits with the lead, looking to move on to the second round of the playoffs. The 2013 NCAA Division I Football Championship continues next weekend with second round games on December 7th. All games will be on the Watch ESPN app at ESPN3.com. For more information, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 89 NCAA championships. Well, it has been a while since Northern Arizona has won a playoff football game. Probably the biggest win of the year they've had it was early this year at home against Montana. Coach Showers used to be an assistant in Montana, but he has really not done well against the Grizz. Two and 14 all time as a head coach here. But they had that big win, 34 to 16. They lost that next week, but then they rattled off six straight to get here to the playoffs. But they have really run into a tough Jackrabbit team tonight here at home. They really have, and the defense has been on the field a lot in this third quarter. But if they've ever needed a stop, now is the time. Down nine with the scuffling offense. Zenner will get it and may actually lose a yard or two on the play. He's at 230, they're gonna say 235 now on the night. Youngblood with the tackle number 98. The career high is 295 for Zenner. Yeah, I said that, 295, that's a lot of yards. And he did it twice, once this year against North Dakota, and he also did it last year uh, against Eastern Illinois. And that was in their first round playoff win. And that's in striking distance. I mean, we still got a whole fourth quarter to go here. So come playoff time, Zenner is at his best. They're going to need him right now on second and 11. And it is a keeper by Sumner. And he makes a nice move to get inside the 10. Stumbles forward to about the six yard line talking to some of the folks from south dakota state they said that they will design some plays for him to run they want to try to get him out on the perimeter more and how about the decision just knowing that the defense is absolutely keying in on a guy with over 200 yards rushing pull that thing out very positive play there on second down sets up a third and two it's a crucial play in this game no yeah, question he may not be the fastest guy out there but at 6'5, 225 that's a lot of body going downhill 
third and three. Zenner with the carry. And I, that was a short three that they needed to get. I, he leaned forward, didn't get much, but I think that may be enough for first down. NAU just completely sailing out there, sending linebackers, safeties, everybody they had, no, pretty much knowing that Zenner was going to get the football. And he was able, like you said, get that short three and carry a couple defenders for a big first down. Average has dripped, uh, excuse me, dipped below 10 now per carry for Zenner. <laughs> Still, he's closing in on 240 yards. It's first and goal from the six. Got to think about possibly throwing the fade. They are selling out. Zenner's going to get it. Good defense by the Lumberjacks. They saw that one coming. Tackle made by Reardon. Ryan Reardon with the tackle. All kinds of Navy Blue players trying to tackle this guy, and a heck of a tackle. When you start talking about a guy with a 10-yard average here tonight, get him on the ground, not allowing him into the end zone. Still one-on-one -on -one coverage, though, outside. When you've got a 6'5 receiver in Jason Schneider, you just wonder, is that fade to the corner of the end zone coming? Two backs behind Sumner on second and goal. Zenner gets the carry, leans forward, maybe gets a few yards. Now you're third and goal. His helmet comes off, so he's tackled at about the two or three. So he's got to come off for at least one play. That was a new rule from last year. And uh, so now perhaps on this third and goal, Kevin, you got to look for Schneider. Yeah, you lose him because of the helmet comes off. I believe he's allowed to stay on the field if it was forced off, but it looks like he's coming off the field. So you'll see the backup Reggie Gandy come into the field. It also looks like we have a Lumberjack defender down as well. Well, with 12.09 to play, Kevin, you've got plenty of time on the clock. However, you go down there, it's going to be two scores. You've got a quarterback situation that is clearly not uh, what you want in the fourth quarter here of the playoffs for the Lumberjacks. I don't want to say the game is on the line here. But it's pretty darn close. It's right there. It's as close as you can be to having the game on the line, if it's not already, just by the fact that your offense has not been able to do anything since really the quarterback change happened. We have not seen Kyron Poe still speculating on the injury. He's dealt with some things this year. I know Cartwright's been in and out. But for this NAU defense, it all comes down to this third down play. Well, you want to talk about halftime adjustments for South Dakota State and Coach Stiglmeyer, his 17th season as head coach there for the Jackrabbits. He joined the staff in 88 as an assistant coach, was then the defensive coordinator before he became head coach. They clearly made some great adjustments for the second half to focus on Bowman, to shut him down. And the Lumberjacks have not had an answer. They really haven't. Well, let's see if we can find out what happened on the replay. Uh, somebody's leg uh, buckled underneath him. It was hard to see on that replay. But uh, there's Coach Thompson out on the field. And so we will take a break. we got an injury timeout right now. But again, score 16-7. to Jackrabbits looking to add to their lead. Today's game will take on the number three seed, the Eagles of Eastern Washington. So join us at 4 next Saturday, December 7th, for FCS second round action as a three seed Eastern Washington hosts either South Dakota State or Northern Arizona live on ESPN3 and the Watch ESPN app. Third and goal. Play action. Sumner, nobody's open. And he throws high, so great defensive stand by the Lumberjacks, and they needed that. Big time stand. They go with the play action. You'll see the play action come, selling out. Got to have it type situation. They send pressure. Dozier, one of the safeties, comes. And Sumner's able to get out of the pocket, but you force a throw away. Nice play on both sides. Sumner doesn't force anything, get the field goal opportunity. But the Lumberjack defense makes that stand that they desperately needed. So now this will be a 20-yard attempt for Justin Sirovatka. Ten of 17 on the season, so he has had his issues. 
and this one's dead center. So now you've got a 12-point spread with 11.57 to go in the ball game, and you've got a lumberjack offense that in the third quarter, Kevin, managed all of seven yards. Just seems like no rhythm. South Dakota State has completely shut down the running game, selling out seven, eight defenders in the box, and just no passing game whatsoever since that first quarter. And Chase Cartwright's going to be the guy, and you've got to find a way. Maybe go no huddle. Maybe go spread three, four wide receivers. I know it's not their blueprint normally for success, but right now what they've been trying to do offensively just has not worked here in the second half. The adjustments made by South Dakota State cannot be understated. They went in, figured out exactly what they needed to do. I think defensive coordinator Clint Brown deserves a ton of credit along with Coach Steigelmeyer. Well, at the Lumberjacks round of the FCS, this one may get a little out of hand here in the fourth. We don't know, but it has not been a blowout. It's been a close game. There have just been a few plays here in the third uh, where South Dakota State has started to pull away. And on that kickoff return, Northern Arizona will have it just outside the 20-yard line. Well, the quarterback situation all year long for the Lumberjacks, Kevin, has, uh, has been a bit of an issue, and now it's really affected Bowman, as it rightly should. He is the entire focal point right now for South Dakota State's defense. As you saw with Poe in the game, a little bit more balance, and it really, really helped Bowman get going with the 17 carries for 116, but just no pass game since Cartwright came into the game, and it's not entirely his fault. A lot of negative plays, a lot of long yardage situations have made it tough on the junior. First and 10 under 12 to play. Cartwright in the pocket and will go down again. A couple jackrabbit defenders in on the sack. And again, another coverage sack, really. Let's give it to Marshall Q, who's had a fantastic game. Just a four-man rush, and they're just having a really tough time holding up in protection. Chase Cartwright, like we said, not the mobile option that Poe is. And when you can rush with four, you can cover with seven, double teaming all kinds of options all over the field. Really nothing there that time for Cartwright. Uh, Douglas and Q have uh, just been teeing off tonight, getting into the backfield. And again, Cartwright had absolutely nowhere to go and just threw that one away. That was Pete who leveled Cartwright. And things are really going from bad to worse for Northern Arizona. Trying to set up a screen to Zach Bowman, and this is one of the reasons why he is struggling to make plays. Just all kinds of blue helmets from South Dakota State, and it looked like Cartwright got up very, very slowly. Might have got rolled up on. Tough situation when you're already getting pressured like he is. If you end up getting a turned ankle, a sprained ankle, it makes it even more hard, difficult to move around the pocket and try to make plays. And a third and long again. Third and 16. Three-man rush. And they still get pressure on Cartwright. And the ball is loose. Now, was that a fumble or an incomplete pass? He was hit from behind. Julian falls on it. There's Poe. Is he going to be back in the game here in the fourth? You just think it has to be a health issue with Poe. Otherwise, you would have seen him, especially since Northern Arizona has struggled in protection. So they're going to go ahead and rule that an incomplete pass. They're saying that arm was going forward. But you have to give a ton of credit to this front four defensively for South Dakota State. Doug Pete, Cole Langer, Chase Douglas, Marshall Pugh, and they've had other guys rolling in there as well. Well, now you've got another punter going down, and a late flag comes in, so this one is going to come back despite what Butler is doing. Wilder went down late, and the official really waited before he flew the flag. It's going to be interesting to see if that's roughing the pass, roughing the punter, or just running into the punter. It's just the five-yard variety, it sounds like, coming from the field, but the referee had to throw that flag. Running into the kicker, defense, that penalty will be declined, first down. So now you've got Poe was warming up, I think, uh, they have gotten a little mixed up with their signals, Kevin Hassel. The penalty was on the Jackrabbits, but not enough to give Northern Arizona the first down. Wilder went down, but the five-yard variety when the Lumberjacks needed to get, I think it was about 16 yards. And so it will be first down for the Jackrabbits on the North 45. And we saw 
Kyron Poe getting on the phone. He's calling upstairs to his quarterback coach, letting him know if he can go. I really do think that there is some kind of health issue there. Still trying to figure that out, but if he can come into the game, you've got to think this next series we're going to see him. Center on first down, positive yardage. He's at over 240 yards rushing. The Lumberjack offense total is at 193. It's an impressive day. Got to give a lot of credit to this offensive line from the Jackrabbits. Opening up a lot of holes for Zach Zenner. And they've got this game right where they want it. Up double digits with the ball. They are going to be in no hurry to snap this football. You can expect to see that play clock drift down near zero each and every snap. Try to see if they can put together a drive and milk as much clock as they possibly can. Second and six. Senator again as he continues to rack up the yardage for Zach Bowman get a load of this at the half he was at 116 yards now he's at 104 he's minus 12 in the second half tremendous effort and adjustments by South Dakota State knowing exactly what they needed to do and you got to feel bad for him the seniors had such a tremendous career here at NAU and he's trying to get his teammates rallied right now for possibly a drive to go back and get in this football game yeah, he has rewritten the record books here in Flagstaff, including tonight. We'll get to that in just a moment on this third and three. And Zenner will move the chains and keep the drive alive with just over nine minutes left. Northern Arizona, I mean, they're still in this game, but they have got to stop the Jackrabbits on this drive. Double A gap pressure. They're trying. They're sending everything they can possibly send while still covering the receivers, and that's still almost a 10-yard gain right now. So Zach Zenner and this offensive line have, like the defensive line for the Jackrabbits, they've taken over this entire football game and become the entire story. Zenner now his second all-time in terms of career rushing yards at South Dakota State. He, can't, he passed Kyle Minnett tonight. Remember, he's only a junior. Josh Rannick, who graduated back in 2001, has the record for the Jackrabbits at just over 6,700 yards. That's a ton of yardage. So uh, Zen is going to have to have an incredible senior season to catch that. But you look at the Lumberjacks this year, undefeated at home. Their first undefeated home season since way back in 1996. Historically, has been a tough place for people to come play the Sky Dome We're here in Flagstaff. Team. Absolutely. Without their head coach today, I wonder if the adjustments just aren't getting made. It's a lot of things against the Lumberjacks right now. Second and seven. And Sumner is going to keep it. What a great fake. He faked out our cameraman, and he takes a slide inside the 10. And what a great play fake. Well, you talk about everybody getting fooled. Sumner had a lot of green ahead of him. Tremendous fake. Puts that ball into the belly of Zach Zenner. Pulls that thing out. And he had the ability, the wheels, to turn it upfield. And how about him being aware to stay in bounds? I mean, that clock's going to start rolling as it just did. Takes us under eight minutes. But the awareness level, smart, smart play. And an athletic play by Austin Sumner. Well, and no need to take that shot either. I mean, all you got to do is look across the sideline and see what an injured quarterback will do for your team. And so it's first and goal under eight minutes to go in the ball game. Gandy with the carry. Gets a few yards. Sumner's an interesting story because as a freshman, you know, there was a battle for that starting spot in camp. And then four games into that freshman season, the starting quarterback left the team. And so then Sumner took over that starting role, spent most of last season with an injured hand, postponed surgery till the offseason. Had it, it was successful. And the coaching staff really thinks it has helped him this year. No question it's helped him, but the toughness, they talk about it around the South Dakota State program. This guy's a leader, and he sure is tough. Yeah, he's a two-year captain, and look at Gandy. Breaks the tackle, and he breaks open this game. The ability to have Zenner, but then also come with Reggie Gandy running through tackles. Again, you'll see it off the right side. We talked a lot about the left side of that offensive line from South Dakota State, but they're moving people around up front, and you just got to think. The NAU is just getting tired. They've been on the field a ton here in the second half. Gandy on the evening, averaging well over six yards a carry. A 
Right now you've got a penalty, a 15-yarder against the Lumberjacks, so that will be assessed on the kickoff. The score now 25 to 7. And for the Lumberjacks, you know, the wheels are just coming off the bus. It's been a tough night, and this one's getting a little bit out of hand with 7 5 to go. You know, this is a team, Kevin, that this year coming into tonight, they only lost once all year to an FCS team. They, they opened the season against Arizona and got walloped 35 to nothing. But you go up to Bozeman and, and face, at that time, a hot Bobcat team. That's really their only FCS loss until tonight. Defense has been on the field an awful lot. Just at the half, 7-all, but it has been dominated by the Jackrabbits in the second half. It's 26-7, to and that last drive, Kevin, may have sealed it. Just seemed to impose their will once again, moving the Lumberjacks off the line of scrimmage. We saw Austin Sumner pull that ball out. Obviously, everybody worried about Zach Zenner. And then the backup, Reggie Gandy, comes in for the second week in a row, scores himself a touchdown. So a little bit of everything right there on the ground, like we've seen all day long from the Jackrabbit offense. So 7.05 to play. You've got uh, the Lumberjacks with their backs against the wall. They've got to get a couple scores. They haven't been able to score at all here in the second half. Again, first and third quarters were just dismal. 15 total yards in the first quarter, seven in the third. Here's another uh, dramatic illustration of the thin air. He could have kicked a field goal from inside his territory. It has not been the Lumberjacks' night here in Flagstaff, their first trip to the playoffs in a decade and it just kind of seemed to get off to a bad start before the game even started we got the news shortly before kickoff that their longtime head coach Jerome Sowers the winningest coach in NAO history would not even be here on the sidelines and it's just kind of been an odd feel here you know a lot of the students are away on Thanksgiving and and the Jackrabbits just kind of came and took this night by the throat see now you've got Poe back out there he comes back into the game, and if it was a health injury or an injury situation, it would be interesting to see how he can hold up. Quarterback's been under a lot of pressure. Throws off of his back foot. He had a jackrabbit defender right in his face, and now he may have a, a hurt right hand. So he's got a uh, he's got either a bump shoulder or rotator cuff, as, as come some of the news we got here. And then as he throws it, yep, it was right onto the helmet of Langer. So if he didn't have an injury situation up until that, I can tell you firsthand, that hurts, folks. Tough to throw the football when you bang your hand against the helmet. Just more push, and you got, once again, it's that defensive line getting pressure in these quarterbacks' faces, making it very uncomfortable to throw the ball, which they have to do now. Second and ten, a wide open receiver over the middle, and we have not talked about Walker since that second quarter. Poe and Walker, that second quarter, they really got on the same page, some big plays in the passing game. And boy, did they need that. Poe comes in and fires a strike in the middle of the zone. Fourth catch of the night for Walker as he closes in on 100 yards through the air. Running the tight end down the middle of the field. And then Walker laying out for that one. He's had a great game tonight, especially when Kyron Poe's been on the field. Starting to pick up the tempo a little bit, try to go down and get as much as they can, as fast as they can, save themselves some clock. Yeah, it's one step forward, one step back, because now it is first and long, Again, Pope will go down. And so it is another sack for this Jackrabbit defense. And a couple plays in a row, Cole Langer finds himself right in the face of the Lumberjack quarterback. Just too much up front for South Dakota State. They're getting there every single snap right now with a four-man rush. No huddle, got to get something going quickly. That pass may have been tipped. It was intended for Bowman, but sailed high. So now you're third and long again. Another high snap. And the ball did indeed get tipped. So when they're not getting there for sacks and quarterback hurries, they're able to get their hands up in the air. That time it was Brian Burke. The senior and you're seeing start the whole entire two deeps getting in on the action right now keeping fresh bodies on that front four for South Dakota State. This to stay in the game for the Lumberjacks. Somebody may have moved early Poe has an open receiver will it be enough for the first down and it's a nice sling to Ricker first team all big sky tight end who had the penalty called on him moments ago. Just sitting down in the zone, 
A lot of soft zone now with the big lead for South Dakota State, and they got some protection that time. Brings up a fourth and two, and obviously the Lumberjacks are going to go for it. Yeah, got to go for it right about midfield. Poe with happy feet, and this one is picked off. Butler with the interception. He's done a great job on defense and special teams. Cardinal sin, you cannot be late out to the flat. Once it wasn't there, go try to make a play with your feet. Throwing that thing late to the flat. You're right, Jerrion Butler right there to make the play. And that one just might about do it here from Northern Arizona. Yeah, they came into the game, the Jackrabbits, second best in the nation with 19 interceptions. Had a couple tonight, two more tonight, right? One in the first half, here one in the late, late in the second half. We mentioned the turnover margin. The turnover battle would be so big, and they're going to end up winning the turnover battle. It looks like 3-2, to two, and you add on that safety. Points in the ball back with that one. Tremendous effort tonight from this Jackrabbit defense. Now Gandy gets the carry. That's the second interception of the night for Poe. Cartwright didn't really throw it all that much. And so now they're just going to try and run things out. Probably get a lot of Gandy because you don't want center to get injured. So I don't think Zenner is going to approach his uh, career mark in terms of rushing yards in a single game. He's at 249. He's still in a phenomenal performance, but yeah, you know, they got to now start thinking ahead to next week. And I'm sure Eastern Washington would love Zenner to be out on the field right now. <laughs> From what we've seen tonight, they have their work cut out for him trying to stop the junior running back. Second and ten. And Gandy's not going to get much on second down, so it'll be third and long. So you, you go back to last year, Kevin. South Dakota State in the first round. They beat Eastern Illinois at home 58 to 10. And then the next week, they got to go up to Bison, not Bison, Bison territory. And North Dakota State really takes it to them 28 to 3. So now this will be the second year in a row that the Jackrabbits come up with a big first round win. And then they've got a really tough second round goal. It's the life of an at-large bid into these FCS playoffs. And you start looking ahead at Eastern Washington and what will the storylines be. Not quite the defense maybe that they've had in years past. And they're definitely going to need a little bit more out of their pass game than they had tonight. Tonight was all about Zach Zenner in this running game. Well, you know, North Dakota State and South Dakota State both made the move from D2 to D1 at the same time. And so you've got now South Dakota, North Dakota. They were a year later, so they moved up as well. And so they see all the success that North Dakota State and South Dakota State are having on the football field. And so everybody's expectations have been raised. And so North Dakota just fired their coach earlier this week. Uh, because, you know, now when, when these teams are having so much success, you want to keep up with them. 26 to 7, 355 to go here in Flagstaff. Four thirteen left on the clock. Twenty-six to seven is our score, and a timeout is called. So hold on for a little bit longer here. Kind of a curious timeout. So I mean, Coach Stiglmar obviously has a good reason for this. You look at the adjustments they made uh, at the halftime. I mean, just every facet of the game, Kevin, offense, defense, special teams, they have really dominated Northern Arizona in the second half. So they will go on and face the Eagles of Eastern Washington up on the red turf, the Inferno in Cheney, Washington. Jacksonville State, again, they'll, they'll probably move on to face McNeese State because they were in, in a blowout as well. Then you got Towson Fordham, Eastern Illinois, and Tennessee State. So the Eagles of Eastern Washington out of the Big Sky Conference. They had a game, their last home game of the season against Portland State. Portland State missed an extra point. Uh, they really came back to haunt them. They lost by one. The Eagles really could have lost that. But they've had a bye week to prepare for this. Had a ton of success up there on the red turf over the past four seasons. You look at even their conference record in the Big Sky, 27-5. and five, And there's a lot of good football being played in the Big Sky. Going to let this one bounce into the end zone. And so for the Northern Arizona Lumberjacks, the quarterback it is, is just going to try and get through this game and not get even more hurt, which is it's kind of a disappointing end to the career for Zach Bowman, who moved into the top spot all time here in Flagstaff in terms of points scored. 
So he's the career leader in points scored, all-purpose yards, carries, and rushing yards. And that, you know, by a mile. But he finally gets his team to the playoffs, but um, he did not get a whole lot of help here this afternoon. He did his job. He had the only score, and he got over 100 yards in rushing. Poe is going to keep it, and Dallas Brown makes the tackle. So now this thing is really just academic for the last four minutes, but I know during that last break you were really focusing on that Jackrabbit front line. They really took, took control of this game. We expected Zenner to have the huge day that he had. Maybe not as big over 200 yards, and that looked like a tremendous catch. Yeah, right that's Rickard. Yeah. Rickard has not exactly had a great game, but boy, that was a beautiful catch along the sidelines. First team all big sky. They're expecting big things out of the junior, and what a tremendous wow. catch to get one hand on that football and bring that in. Got to have some big mitts for that. Impressive. 6'3", 240 out of Gilbert, Arizona. Moves the chains. Hey, you want to try and at least end this game on a bit of a positive note. But there has not been much positive here in the second half for Northern Arizona. That one complete. But uh, barely any gain on that one for Nicole. Right now for NAU, either quarterback, whichever one's in the game, if their first read isn't open, they really have to start thinking about moving and getting out of the pocket because these four down linemen for the Jackrabbits are getting on them in a hurry. Oh, nearly another interception. You've got three turnovers on the night for Northern Arizona. And that defense, you know, we, we, we talked about them at the top of the program. The Lumberjack defense has been very opportunistic. Six, six picks on the year. Boy, say that six times fast. Anyway, they returned an interception for a touchdown, okay? And then they <laughs> led the nation in defensive touchdowns with eight. But they haven't had that opportunity tonight. They've gotten their turnovers. A lot of them, like you said, have come in the passing game. And South Dakota State just decided at one point they weren't really going to attempt to win the game throwing the football. Dan Sumner with some nice gains on the ground, and as well as some nice throws here in the fourth quarter. Got a bit of his mojo back, and they needed him on that drive to really seal this thing. And so it'll be another excellent performance for Coach Stiglmeyer in the first round as the Jackrabbits. You know, again, it, in that region, Kevin, you, you got to think about now, North and South Dakota. I mean, college game day goes to Fargo, and they highlight the Bison. And it was all a love fest for North Dakota State because they were playing Delaware State. They blew them out. I think it was 52 to nothing. I called that game. But it was all about FCS. And they're the model program right now. The Jackrabbits are trying to make a statement to say, we're right there with you. Absolutely. And it's obvious that they've had a tremendous season now, back-to-back -back FCS playoff appearances. And how about the format? I mean, this is going to be such an exciting next month. You, you look at the brackets, and Rickard almost makes another fantastic one-handed catch. Couldn't come up with it. But you start looking at the brackets and the potential matchups down the line, the playmakers, their star power, there's teams that have had tremendous success. The early on BCS busting wins. Teams like Eastern Washington beating Oregon State. Eastern Illinois beating San Diego State. Obviously North Dakota State beating Kansas State. All these big time wins that really put FCS on the map for this season. Now they all get to duke it out and figure out who's going to be the champion. Second and 10 on the 35 as Northern Arizona is trying to get something going. Dangerous play there. Big hit on the sidelines. And uh, Alex Holmes wanted some kind of penalty mark or toss. It's just good physical football. Two deep zone trying to squeeze that thing in along the sidelines. You got to be very careful as the quarterback that you don't throw that thing too far down the field because that's exactly what will happen. And pretty close play as Nick Mears coming over from the free safety spot. Back up redshirt freshman. Needs to be careful now with those rules in college football because had he been flagged or thrown out of this game for targeting, guess what? He's done next game. Yeah. Absolutely. Seen a couple tough snaps here this afternoon for Northern Arizona as Bowman in his swan song trying to make something happen on the receiving end. And I don't think they've done that enough. Just a simple check down throw. You don't have to try to block everybody up all the time and throw the football down the field. Sometimes getting the ball to your best player underneath the coverage can be a big time play for you. And fourth down, obviously, a go for it situation. Well, tough night for the Big Sky Conference. For the first time in its history, it gets four teams into the playoffs in part thanks to the expanded field of, of 24 teams. But you've got 
the two teams, Montana and Eastern Washington, out of the Big Sky. They've got the first round by. And then you have the two Big Sky teams playing tonight, Northern Arizona and Southern Utah. Coincidentally, those two teams played each other last week, but they both lose here in the first round. There's a little dump off to the running back. Inside the 10. Casey Yon has had himself a tough night. A couple of pretty hard hits on his limited carries. And Andy Thompson making his head coaching debut for Northern Arizona. You know, a lot of guys have come out of that Montana Grizzly program. I mean, historically, over the last, let's say, 25 years, as the Lumberjacks now get inside the five. But that Montana program, I mean, they have really been one of the model programs for years and years. They have had many appearances in the national championship game. They've won the title a few times. They're back in the playoffs again this year, as Poe is going to try and sneak it in. And it really doesn't feel like a playoffs without them there. And of course, that's where Sowers spent 12 years. Thompson played there. Timeout called. 121 to go. Down here, I know the game conclusion, we pretty much know that South Dakota State's going to be moving on to play Eastern Washington, but how about Zach Bowman? One last goal line carry, possibly yeah. for a touchdown. I think it's the right way to send out your senior running back who's had an unbelievable career. The, the one that gets me is the four straight thousand yeah. yard seasons, one of only nine FCS players to do it. He's been a great teammate, he's been a great leader for this program, and you get a couple more guys like that, you're going to do all right as a program. We have not much to celebrate in this second half for Bowman. But I think you're right. That would be the right call. And they give it to him. The Jackrabbits aren't going to make it easy. Do they go for it on fourth? Absolutely. You got to go for it on fourth down. Jackrabbits obviously expecting. Trying to run a little bit of a mixed direction, almost a wing T style play. You don't see that a lot at this level of football, but trying to get that dominant defensive line moving one way and try to get Zach Bowman off the outside, but Jackrabbit's right there waiting for it. Well, you talk about that four straight years of reaching 1,000 yards or more for Bowman. You go back to the freshman year for Zenner, he only had 470 yards. So to do that four straight year, that is pretty incredible. Okay, so at this point, I think it's safe to call this one a final, 26 to seven. So South Dakota State moves on to face Eastern Washington, 48 to seven in the fourth. That one looks pretty safe as well. Jacksonville State is going to take on McNeese State, and so we are just about set with all of our second round matchups, the quarterfinals as well on a number of the ESPN platforms that next week in December. And of course, the championship game will be in January in Frisco, Texas. And it's another Northern Arizona turnover. That is the third pick of the night. And it's the second one for Butler. That epitomizes the night for this NAU offense right there. Late with the football, trying to throw it in the middle of the end zone. Secondaries are too good, and they're going to make a play on the football each and every time you're late with it. Poe trying to make a play, stepping up in the pocket. Gets pretty decent protection, but off his back foot, tries to attempt a jump throw to Jesse Brantley, and that's just not going to get it done. At this level, in the FCS playoffs, you're going to play good defenses that will turn that football over and get it back for their offenses each and every time you make a mistake like that. But a learning moment. Teaching tape, moving forward into next year. Poe, just a sophomore, he'll learn from yep. that and obviously get better. So now it's the victory formation for the Jackrabbits. Their turnover margin now on the season balloons to a plus 16. That's how you win football games. They obviously have a blueprint for success, but I will tell you, I will tell you what, we're going to need to see more out of Austin Sumner next week throwing the football. He made an impact in this game running it a little bit here in the second half, but they're going to have to find a way to throw the football 
Eastern Washington pass defense, 12th out of 13 teams in the big sky. So I can tell you, I know it's a week away, but Eastern Washington expect to see a little bit more throwing of the football from Austin Sumner next week. Bit of a coming out party for Zach Center here. Uh, second year in a row, he has come up with a, just an enormous performance in the first round of the FCS playoffs right here on ESPN3. So Coach Stiglmeyer and the Jack Rabbits of South Dakota are moving on to face the Eagles of Eastern Washington. The Lumberjacks of Northern Arizona will finish off their season with a record of nine and three, a disappointing end here at home, their first home loss of the season. Hey, you talk about that Eastern Washington offense. It's not only Vernon Adams, but how about that red shirt freshman Cooper Cup? I mean, that guy is setting all kinds of records as a freshman. So there you go. Brackets are now final. It's Eastern Washington and South Dakota State, McNeese State, Jacksonville State, and then you see the other games, Towson, Florida, Eastern Illinois, and Tennessee State. Again, quarterfinals will be the next week. December 13th and 14th. Stay with us. We're not done. We're going to wrap things up from Flagstaff right after this. So for Kevin O'Connell, I'm Peter Young saying so long from the walk-up Sky Dome. With the final score again, 26 to 7. To watch this entire game on replay, as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to ESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.